Hello, guys and gals. Welcome to Proposals, Premium Pricing and Self-Closing Offers with James Tuckerman. Now, to make sure that you are in the right place, I want you to answer a question for me. I want you to use the chat tool and I want you to tell me whether any of these are applicable to you. If one is applicable, write one. If two is applicable to you, write one comma two. If all three are applicable, you can write the word bingo. All right, cool. Uh, you're in the right place. What you sell, is it complex? Is it difficult to explain what you do quickly? Is that the case with you or not the case with you? If it is, write one. Number two, in your industry, there's no obvious price range. There are a few benchmarks or easy comparisons. What you do is not like selling a loaf of bread or a carton of milk because it's difficult to explain and there are no obvious benchmarks or easy comparisons. If that's you, write two or we'll leave it blank. Number three, the sales cycle is typically long. Sales often require multiple conversations. If that's you, write three or not. And if you've got all three, write the word bingo. <laughs> Go Calvin. Calvin's written the word bingo. Linda has written bingo only for hosts and panelists. Uh, if it's all three, you can write bingo for everyone and that way everyone can see it. Now, by the way, if you're not participating and you're sitting on the fence, you're thinking, oh, I should participate, but, you know, I'm doing other things. I'm washing the dishes. I'm driving the car. I'm checking my emails at the same time. Do your best to get involved. Play along to the best of your abilities. And that is because when you get involved, you get rewarded. For example, you are more likely to remember the types of things that we talk about. If you're more likely to remember the things that we talk about, you're more likely to take action. If you take action, that creates momentum. Momentum creates momentum. And before you know it, you have outcomes. It's a lot more fun for me. It's a lot more fun for you. It's a lot more fun for everyone else. Plus, you will get this participation bonus. This is the ultimate persuasion and influence checklist. And you will get that by simply answering my question. Are you one? Are you two? Are you three? Are you all three? If it's all three, write the word bingo. But all you need to do is participate and you will get our participation bonus, the ultimate persuasion and influence checklist. The irony here is if you follow the steps that we're going to work through today, you won't need to be very persuasive. If you're focusing on proposals, pricing, and self-closing offers, you don't need to be, I don't know, jumping through hoops or, I don't know, performing cartwheels for your customers and clients. It should all happen naturally. So one more chance to answer this question, is what you sell complex? Is it difficult to explain what you do? Type down number one. There's no obvious price range. There are a few benchmarks in your industry. Type number two, the sales cycle is long. Sales often require multiple conversations. Type three, or if it's all three, right, bingo. <laughs> so Mark has written all three to hosts and panelists. Mark, I want you to look for the drop down that says everyone and write the word bingo. Excellent. And once again, you will get this. If you do not participate, you will not get this. No participation bonus for you. I'm like the soup Nazi, okay? So <laughs> we know that we know that what you sell is complex for most of you guys and gals. There's no obvious price range for most of you guys and gals. The sales cycle is long for most of you guys and gals. If it is long, why do they drag their feet? I want you to tell me why they drag their feet. What are the reasons why people what are the reasons people give you for saying, oh, they're not, they're not quite ready yet? What are the, some of the things that they say? What are their greatest subjections? Why do they drag their feet? Once again, use the chat tool. I've made it easy for you so far. You could write one, two, or three, or the word bingo. Now I want you to get a little bit more involved again. You've heard all these objections again and again and again. Some of them just may have sprung top of mind immediately, immediately. So, for example, Tammy said uh, money and fear. Tammy, you've also left that comment for hosts and panelists. Use the drop down so we can all see. And Paul did that as well too. Paul wrote approvals and buy-in. David said their pain isn't self-evident yet. That's interesting. Their pain is not evident yet. 
they've got a uh, they've got a, a vitamin deficiency which hasn't quite yet grown into a full blown headache. So the urgency is not there. Matt, you've also left a comment for hosts and panelists, but he says uh, they are too busy to process the complexities and they're hesitant with a six month engagement. All right. So Matt, in his particular world here, they are too busy to process the complexities and hesitant with a six month engagement. So what Matt's talking about here is that what he's selling is complex. It's difficult to explain. And then as well too, he's asking for a large commitment. Matt, we'll work on that today, I think. Now, while Tammy said money and fear, Esther said expensive. That's right. Uh, Evan said selling our product is like selling insurance. They don't know they need it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, insurance is one of those things that we do know we need, but it's a grudge purchase. And some of you guys and gals, I'm sure, sell something that is a grudge purchase. Evan, once again, leave your comment for everyone, not just hosts and panelists. Calvin says they don't have budget approval. All right. So they're they're the decision, they're not the decision maker. There's someone in the middle. That's something that uh that they can have a think about. And your comments are coming in thick and fast, and I obviously can't read them all. But Neil said they need to think about it. And I'm going to pause on that one for a moment because you've given us a whole bunch of different reasons why they drag their feet. But the most common reason is because they lack certainty. Your job as a business owner that's selling something is to transfer transfer your certainty onto the prospect. So first and foremost, if you're not certain, that's a problem. Uh, have a look at your product or service and work out whether it's good enough to be sold. Because if you're not certain, that's a problem. If you are certain, so for example, in my world, I see people again and again come into our world, get amazing outcomes. I'm certain that what we do works for the right type of person. So I can feel that certainty. But it's your job to transfer transfer your certainty onto them. And if they say they don't get it, they don't understand it, it requires explanation, that's the big problem here. We have failed to transfer our certainty onto them. So let's get into let's get into this a little bit deeper. Uh, if we are talking about sales, we're talking about marketing, we're talking about the pointy end of the deal where the rubber hits the road and the deal gets done, right? There are these three big sins that I see people commit again and again and again, and they're they are just some of the reasons why we fail to transfer that certainty. The first one is, are you ready for this? Black art quoting. Does anyone know what I mean by black art quoting? What that means is that somebody comes into your world, you have a conversation, maybe it's an amazing conversation, maybe you've had several conversations, and they say, oh, can you send me a proposal? Or can you send me a quote? And you go, sure, not a problem. And this is what you do. You leave the meeting or you hang up the phone, end the Zoom call, and you go, ooh, how much should I charge? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been in that position? Or does every deal involve this conversation in your head where you go, hmm, well, you know what? I, I, I want to obviously you know, charge a, a good amount, and uh, they seem to have a lot of money. But I don't want to come across as too expensive because if I come across as too expensive, they won't go with me. But I don't want to come across as too cheap either because if I come across as too, too cheap, they're not going to take me seriously. So what you do is you work out how much effort's involved. You have a think about their company. You break up some things here. You, what you do is you lick your finger and you test the wind. <laughs> you, you think to yourself, how much do I need this money right now? And you come up with a number. And you come up with a number and that and that's called that's called black art quoting. Have you ever been there? And then you send them the proposal and you go, Phew, I hope I got it right. I really hope I got that right. In our world, we don't do black art quoting. And in your world, I hope that you don't do black art quoting either. Cool? Rock and roll. Number two, should you offer a rate card? Should you share your rate card? This is another big mistake. People say, can I get your rate card? Or maybe you even uh, have your rates on your website uh, and somebody comes to you, you're selling something complex. There are no price comparisons based on what you do. The sale is typically going to require a conversation anyway. And then you pull together a rate card and you put it on your website or somebody asks for it immediately and you send them your rate card. Why is this such a big mistake? Well, because it immediately attracts the price shoppers. 
doesn't it? When someone asks for your rate card, what are they basing their decision on? They're basing their decision entirely on price. And that simply means that if someone with a slightly better price or a slightly better offer suddenly appears on their radar, they're going to ditch you. They're going to move on. That's how to attract poor quality clients. All right, sin number one, black art quoting. We don't have consistency in our pricing. Number two, sharing the goods up front. Uh, our prices, our rates, our rate cards. Number three, do you sell time for money? Is the way that you structure what, you're, what you do eerily similar to everybody else in your industry? Is that the case with you? If you're talking to people and they're saying, oh, it's too much money. I'm not sure it's right for me. Can you send me a proposal? Either you haven't transferred the certainty or you're selling a commodity offer. And a commodity offer basically means that what you're producing sounds like the same as what everybody else is producing. And if you're selling that some, something that sounds like a commodity that is being sold by everyone everywhere, people will always go with the cheapest option. A commodity is like coal, right? P people don't buy the most expensive coal, right? Coal is coal is coal, so they go with the cheapest option. And what we find again and again and again is people come into our world and we look at their offer and we say, you know what? You've structured what you're doing so that it sounds exactly like everybody else. You're selling your time for money and uh, people don't value their time so they don't value your time and they end up dragging you down. They end up asking for discounts. They say, uh, is that the best that you can do? They say, can you sharpen the pencil? And that's the way that it plays out. Now, Matt, you've just written a comment for hosts and panelists. Once again, try to leave comments for everyone so that everyone can see. I do not want you selling something that sounds like everybody else that immediately brings up the same objections that you hear again and again and again. So once again, I'd like you to participate. I want to reverse this scenario. I want us guys and gals to do the opposite. I'm going to ask you, I'm looking for one or two words, maybe three. How would it feel to you, and I want you to use the chat tool, how would it feel to you in your world if instead of every time you meet with someone, you have to come up with a new proposal or indeed a new price point or a new offer? How would it feel if you could introduce what you do to everyone that comes into your world? And you might have three different packages that you have, but when anyone comes into your world, you can with confidence say, here is my rights. Here is my package. Here is my offer specifically for you. And you don't have to go through that mental drama every single time. How would that feel? Give me one or two words. What about this, uh, this idea about price shoppers? Knowing that when somebody comes into your world, they're interested specifically in you. That you can have that conversation with confidence that you are the right fit for the person that you're speaking with. And they're not, I don't know, looking over your shoulder <laughs> for the next best option, the next best thing. They are there because of you, because they want you. We call those people VIPs, very interested prospects. What about this third one? What's the inverse of a commodity offer? The inverse of a commodity offer, where is where you place yourself in a market of one. Out there, it's a bloody red ocean and everybody's doing the same thing. They're, 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 they're drowning. They're not waving. Hire me. Hire me. And then they sink below the waves. I would like to put you in a blue ocean, a blue ocean of one, where you are the obvious and logical choice. How would that feel? I've asked for one or two words and Calvin has said four words. That would be awesome. Faith says that's amazing. Margaret has said certain, confident, assertive, awesome. Once again, Margaret, uh, leave the comment for everyone so everyone can see. Cara, Carolina uh, said uh, liberating. Gail said she would love it, but it is, is great, fantastic, confident, uh, relief. David agrees with what Robert said. He said li li uh, liberating as well. Uh, automated says, Matt, that's terrific. Uh, powerful. This is amazing. I'm going to throw down two words on the screen that I love. So we have a, a group of people that we work with called our B2B Blazers. They are part of our private posse of proactive and passionate B2B business owners, our B2B Blazers. And we host 
private group mentoring calls for these people every week. And once a month, we have an open day. And that's what we're doing today. It's an open day where we bring in more people, we cover a bigger topic, and then we go a little bit deeper over the following weeks. That's generally what we do. Now, before we host our private group mentoring calls that we host weekly, we circulate a little survey and we ask some questions. Uh, where are you at? Where are you stuck? Have you had any epiphanies? Have you had any breakthroughs? And someone came through earlier, earlier this year, a woman, a woman called Louise, and she said, I finally feel like I have, and I love this language. Are you ready? She said, I finally feel like I have decision clarity. And I thought, wow, that is a great answer. I finally feel like I have decision clarity. And I think that getting decision clarity is one of the most wonderful, powerful feelings that you can have. Because most of the time we're jumping from this to that, from this to that, and that seems to be the nature uh, and the life of a typical small business owner. But you know what? When you have decision clarity, when you have a process or a path that you can follow, you can start the day, you can start the week, you can start the month, you can start the year knowing this is what I need to do as someone in my position to get ahead. And that's what I want to give you today. I want to give you something called decision clarity, which is why we have our agenda for today. Yes, we're talking about proposals, pricing, and self closing offers. So for each of these topics, proposals, pricing, self-closing offers, I am going to provide you with an outcome. I am going to give you a strategy, and then I am going to show you an accelerator to get that outcome faster. So for example, with proposals, I'm going to show you how to simplify or eliminate proposals completely. Pricing, how to charge more while doing less. Self-closing offers, how to get yes faster without compromising. Now, at the top here, I've got, I've said, where do you think you need the most help at the top of this slide? But instead, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me which of these outcomes you want the most. One, two, or three. Would you like to simplify or eliminate proposals? Would you like to charge more while doing less? Or would you like to get to yes faster without compromising the, the quality of the work that you do. Because often when we talk about charging more, people say, I can't possibly do that because they associate that with a lesser quality product or service. Give me a one or a two or a three. Who said that? Someone wrote number two, please. Uh, Evan gets Evan gets a, a virtual round of applause woo, for being so outstandingly polite. One, two or three, every business is different. And for those that are not playing along, I just want you to observe that the people who are playing along are becoming a little bit more self-aware. They're looking at this and going, yeah, that is something that I'd like to tackle. That is something that I'd like to be on top of. If you're not self-aware, it's really hard to get ahead because you don't know what needs fixing. Now, Kathy, she came into our world and she says, I'm closing as early as the first conversation. It used to take her three, four, five conversations. I just had my best month ever. Plus, I signed my first international client. She went from selling face-to-face -to, -face to over Zoom. Borders have become meaningless. My potential client base has exploded thanks to your training. What did Kath do? Kath did all three. She did all three plus one. What was that extra one thing that she did? She did a little, bit of our, uh, well, a little bit of training with us called our One Call Close Formula. And yes, guys and girls, this is your second participation bonus. Number two, second participation bonus. This is called the One Call Close Formula. And it's a framework for hosting a strategy call over Zoom. Now, it's not necessarily about closing on the first call because depending on your industry, you might not be able to do that. But it is about getting to your future, it is about getting your future customer or client to that place of certainty where you are able to transfer your certainty to them. And by the end of the call, they're thinking, yep, I need this. And if I can afford this, I will buy this. And that is called the one call close formula. And we get feedback about this process all the time, almost once a week, just did the one call close formula training. Brilliant. A great breakdown of a decision call that is non-salesy and provides heaps of value. Because selling is about the transfer of certainty, and that generally includes demonstrating your value. So where do you think you need the most help? Or indeed, what outcome do you want the most? One, two, or three? Because as I said, as I said, if you do not participate, 
No bonus for you. No bonus for you. Uh, the participation bonuses will be sent to you guys and gals sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours, depending on whether or not you're willing and able to participate. If you don't participate, no bonus for you. Uh, and you're only harming yourself. Sorry? <laughs> Do I sound like the bad guy? I could be a little bit of a meanie, but you know what? It's only because I want you to succeed. It's called tough love. Speaking of tough love, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have our private group, our B2B Blazers, and we host weekly calls. And once a month, we have an open day, which is what we're doing today. Uh, just a shout out to our Blazers about our upcoming calendar of events. I realize I've got the wrong slide here. I've got the wrong dates. But however, I wanted to give a shout out to our people to remind them that we have a couple special events coming up in the not too distant future. And one of them is our Intelligent Offers Accelerator. And that there is going to be run over uh, two and a bit mornings if you're in Australia, two and a bit evenings if you're in North America. And that is about focusing on your offers because spending a little bit of time on your offers transforms everything else in your business. Plus, we're going to follow that up. I think the week after uh, or the week after that, I'm not quite sure. As I said, I've got the wrong screen grab on the screen. Uh, with a Build-A-Thon Bootcamp, the Build-A-Thon Bootcamp where we're going to build a funnel together. You now, you know how to get access to our preloaded calendar. Go have a look. But I wanted to bring those things to your attention because our next bootcamp is starting soon. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right, let's get into this first piece of the puzzle called proposals, yeah? So when I talk about proposals, I think it's important that you know a little bit about me and my background. I mean, if you're brand new here, you know nothing about me, you're thinking, who is this guy? James Tuckerman, being such a meanie, <laughs> showing us some tough love, bribing us for comments. Who is this guy, right? Because I could be. I mean, like I could be like some 20-something guy selling $17 eBooks from my mama's basement, and there are plenty of them online. That's not you, though, is it? I could be the sales trainer from the 1980s or the 1990s or the noughties with the power suit, the power, the gray power suit that's all shiny with the red tie, saying things like, look within to lock them in. <laughs> I could be that guy, but no, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm a real guy from the real world that's been running real businesses for a really long time. I started my first business in my 20s, a print magazine made of paper and ink. Remember those things? I launched that from the spare bedroom of my parents' home, and it became a market leader in my home country, Australia. Uh, I was named best small publisher in Australia twice. We won best magazine of the year in my 20s. It was a wild, wild time. Now, when I was building that business and running that business as my full-time gig, I learned a couple of things. And one of those things was this little mnemonic, and I want you to write it down. Systems equal sanity. Systems equal sanity. Because what we're doing right now is we're running through a system. And as I said, most business owners, particularly self-employed business owners that might be doing it on their own, or they might have a small team, less than 10, they're usually jumping from one thing to the next all the time. But however, when you have a system that you can follow, that's when you get that decision clarity. Systems equal sanity. Write that down. Someone do me a favor and leave it in the chat. Systems equals sanity. That's what I do, what, what I did. That is my background. That allowed me to sell magazines via retail. That's called merchandising. Sell magazines via subscription. That's called direct mail. And it was the forerunner to all internet marketing. And sell big, fat advertising packages, which usually required all the different things that we're talking about today. That was a complex sale. It was difficult to, difficult to explain why we were different. And it would often require multiple conversations. That's a little bit of my, about my history. Why am I so passionate? <laughs> Why do I bring so much enthusiasm to these calls? Well, it's partly because I enjoy it a lot, but I'm also passionate about these people. This is my beautiful wife, Catherine, and my two wonderful boys. And when I was running that first business, and this has continued to this day, not only did I realize that systems equal sanity, but I also figured something else out. Once again, write this down. Automation equals freedom. Gee, my handwriting is getting worse and worse. Automation equals freedom. Somebody write it out in the chatty chat. 
Automation equals freedom because my handwriting is so bad. And that is because when we all start our own business, we go into it because we want freedom. We want the autonomy to do the things that we, that we want to do when we want. We want to be the captains of our own ship, the masters of our own destiny. However, it doesn't always work out that way, does it? Sometimes we end up slaves to our business. But however, through the process of running multiple businesses, I have learned systems equals sanity and automation equals freedom. Thanks to all those wonderful people for helping out. And who are these amazing people? These are the other amazing people that I do what I do for. Yeah, I'm talking about people just like you guys and gals. Uh, our B2B blazers. These are generally solo or micro business owners. They are B2B is in the sense that they're their own business and they're usually selling to other businesses or other business owners. They're very good at what it is that they do, but sometimes they struggle with some of the other stuff like sales and marketing, like automation, like coming up with offers that are compelling for their target audience because they're too close. And it is a real challenge when you run your own business. You are generally too close, which is why community equals clarity. Once again, write that down. Systems equals sanity. Automation equals freedom. Community equals clarity. And they are three principles that guide absolutely everything that we do. So that's me. That's my background. That's what I'm about. What do we sell? I always find it a little bit reassuring when I'm on like a call like this and someone actually tells me what it is that they sell at the beginning. <laughs> so I know I know why they're doing it, not just for fun, even though I'm having a lot of fun. What we sell, we sell training. We have the B2B school for that. We sell technology solutions. We have B2B Dash for that. When you can add those two things, training and technology, that's a powerful outcome. Add the community piece. And that is a crazy powerful trifecta because when you get those three things, you get systems equals sanity, automation equals freedom, and community equals clarity. So when I was out there hustling to sell advertising packages for my business, I'm sure this is going to be very familiar to most of you guys and gals. Here's the way it would play out. Are you ready? I would go meet with someone. Is that how it works for you? Do most new client relationships start with a meeting of some sort? Is that the way it plays out? Well, that was definitely the case when I was selling advertising packages. And a little bit later when I was also uh, selling consulting packages, you go meet with someone. Mark says, yes. So does Margaret. And uh, Linda says, virtually, yes, as is the nature of the game now. You would meet with someone. Then he goes, well, and they would say, hey, I'd like to see a proposal. Can I see a proposal? Me, I mean, like I was, I was even worse than that. Uh, they wouldn't say, can I see a proposal? We'd have the meeting. It'd go really well. Then utter those beautiful magic words like, so what do we do next? Like those magic four words. You know, how, how, how can we move this forward? How can we move this forward? Six words, right? Those magical six words. And I would say, oh, um, I'll uh, send you a proposal. And then I'd go home and do the blackout quoting, right? Um, in the early days, I was running my business from my home. We'd have the meeting, we'd have the proposal, then I would go away, and then I would put together my offer. Meeting, proposal, offer. And this is the way that it still exists for a lot of people. But you know what? I said it before. If we can spend a little bit more time on this third piece, the offer, if we can spend a little bit more time just doing that, do you know what that means? It means we don't need that piece here. We actually don't need the proposal. Do it really, really well. And you don't need the meeting either. If you can start on your proposal, start with the end in mind. Most people do that. They make it up as they go along. They wing it and they wonder why they struggle. This is Naomi. Now, when we met Naomi, she was, uh, she was a copywriter. And she got a phone call. I remember her telling me this story. She got a phone call from someone and they said, I need you to, to do some copywriting for me and my business. And they said, can you come see me? And she said, sure. And she drove across town all the way from one side of town to the other side of the town, went to the person's office, which turned out to be their house. And then she sat in the living room with a woman and her husband and had a cup of tea while they told, while they told her all her ambitions, all their ambitions, what she wanted her to do for them. And then she said, what's your budget? And they said, $500, <laughs> right? She drove all the way, driven all the way across town. 
I don't know how much the petrol cost. She, she'd spent, you know, a, a, an hour driving one way, an hour in their living room, an hour driving home, three hours in total, all the petrol. And uh, they said that they had a budget of $500. And do you know what Naomi did as a copywriter? She took the gig. <laughs> <laughs> she took the gig because she needed the gig. And that was Naomi's life. And she came into our world selling $500 gigs. She says, I went through the process you teach. Not only did I close the next two sales calls with new clients without an ounce of sales pressure, I made a record sale for my business. I doubled my rates. It was my biggest spend ever. She went from $500 gigs to $9,600 packages because she spent a little bit of extra time uh, diving into her offer. So I got a question for you guys and gals, slightly trick question. What is the best type of proposal? Let me know what is the best type of proposal. We've hit the 30 minute mark. I've offered up two participation bonuses. If you have not participated yet, there is a real risk that you will not, not get any of those participation bonuses. We had the ultimate persuasion and influence checklist. We had the one call close formula. What is the best type of proposal? Uh, Colin says a clear one. Nancy says a custom proposal. Uh, Byron says a self-closing offer. I like what Calvin said. I like what Gree has said. The best type of proposal is no proposal. It is no proposal. The best type of proposal is no proposal. Um, now, I don't know who said custom proposal, but for me, I would like the opposite of that. I don't want a custom proposal. I want to know who's coming into my world. I want to understand their headaches, their obstacles, their aspirations and desires before they even see me. And then when they come into my world, I want to give them an offer that by and large does not require a long-winded proposal with thud factor. A great proposal can be delivered in less than 30 words, uh, depending on what it is that you do. So the best proposal type proposal is no proposal. And the reason why is because VIPs don't need them. Can anyone remember what I meant? Well, I used the expression VIPs a moment ago. Does anyone remember what VIPs stands for in our world? It's not very important people. It is someone's typing fast, very interested prospects. Very interested prospects don't need proposals. They're the best type of people to, to, to hire and engage with you. And I know that there are some people on this call right now going, well, that's never going to work for me because, you know, in our industry, there's multiple decision makers and, uh, and what I'm selling is big ticket and it's a six-month commitment and all those different elements that come with it. Well, Naomi here, she ended up selling a $9,600 product over the phone or via Zoom where people would drop a 10% deposit with their credit card. And they would do that without needing a proposal just because of the way she was able to structure the offer and create, are you ready, guys and girls, an HNB, HNB. That stands for a high no-brainer offer. And the purpose of a high no-brainer offer is to get someone to buy something from you, get them into your world. Then you can introduce the six-month plan, the six-month program, the six-month whatever it's going to be. High no-brainer. Get them to buy something smaller from you up front. Now, once again, I know that there's a bunch of people thinking that's not going to work for me. I implore you to suspend your disbelief just for a moment and let's see where we take this. So if you want to pull together an offer that is a high no-brainer to your target audience, you will need your own monetization mantra. Da, da, da. Take a photo of the screen right now. A little bit earlier, uh, I did actually circulate a, um, a bunch of, uh, what, what do we call them? A bunch of worksheets. I'm going to put them in the chatty chat now. Now, you don't have to grab hold of the worksheets now. You don't have to print them out now. But what I do ask you to do is download them now. And the reason for that is that you can come back to the things that we're working through right now. And you can revisit the lessons in your own time. You can revisit the lessons in your own time. And you can apply the strategies to you and your own business, starting with the monetization mantra. Da, da, da. All right. All great sales and marketing starts with six words. Are you ready? One, one, one. That's three words for those people that can count up to three. <laughs> one person, 
one problem, one product. What we see again and again and again is business owners and we say, who's your target audience? And they say, anyone and everyone with a checkbook and a pulse. They say it in their own way. Who's your target audience? Oh, um, it is uh, SMBs or SMEs or uh, small business owners or passionate and proactive, aspiring, busy business owners. <laughs> and then I also see these other vague things like heart-centric and, uh, and uh, socially-minded business owners. All of those things are vague and meaningless. When I go out there and say, I can help anyone, that's going to be a problem. That does not make your future customers and clients feel confident. It doesn't. You guys and gals know this. You know it already. Perhaps you've decided to, uh, you know, you've decided to forget this idea, banish it from your brain because it's too hard to think about. But specialists always charge more. Specialists charge more. One person. It's really, really helpful if you can have extreme target audience clarity. And this is, that's his target. <laughs> it doesn't look like it says target. Target audience clarity. There's a G in there, right? Target audience clarity. Uh, and every, I don't know, every single marketing professional or trainer is going to tell you this. And that's where the, everyone always begins with your target audience. Yet people continue just to go, oh yeah, you know, I target, I, I target, uh, I target, uh, I heard this one the other day. I target people, men or women who are employed that are married or single aged between 18 and 64. I heard that the other day that they said that that's their target audience. <laughs> and I was like, so you target everyone but swingers because <laughs> they were single or married, 18 to 64 and employed. This is someone that provides tax services. The last bit was, uh, and they believe that they could be spending their income better. Come on, right? The narrower that you get, the more you can charge. That's number one target. One problem. The second problem that I see is that everybody's trying to solve their, all everybody's problems, right? All of their problems, all at once. I see this particularly with trainers and coaches, business coaches. What do you do? Oh, I'm going to help you save your business. You know, I'm going to help you with all aspects of your business. It's just too, just too damn broad. Your goal is to think of the problem that they have before they know they need you. Just one problem. What's one problem that they have before they know they need you and focus on that? Just focus on that. So today I'm talking about offers. I'm talking about proposals. I'm talking about pricing. I'm talking about self-closing offers. But at the end of the day, I'm talking about an offer. I'm talking about the pointy end of the deal, helping you get clients to say yes faster. That's what I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on everything. I'm just focusing on that one piece today. Then you've got to decide on what that product looks like. And I'll tell you what, your product is not you and your product is not time. Please, no, that's not what I want. Your product is some sort of outcome, some sort of packaged, bundled outcome. And that can be done in a bunch of different ways. One person, one problem, one product. Now, I've gone quite literal with some of those things there when they, when they, when they come in there. What I would like you to do right now, what I would like you to do right now uh, is that I would like you to write down on the screen using the chatty chat tool or on a piece of paper, who is your person? Who is your ideal person? Now, if you want to take it a little bit further, what is a problem that that particular person has? One person, one problem. And what might that look like as a product? A self-contained, standalone product, maybe a high no-brainer that doesn't require bucket loads of cash and, uh, and a 12-month commitment, what is something that you can sell that's a little bit smaller than what most people typically sell in your space? One person, one problem, one product. So, for example, Mary says person equals her manager. I would say what type of manager, and I would say in what industry. Because when we can drill down the person, we can identify their problems a lot faster. So, for example, if Mary said person equals manager. It could be the manager in a retail shop. It could be the human resources manager in a large corporation. Can you see, Mary? They're going to have different headaches. But when we understand the target audience, we can understand the headaches. 
Matt has said uh, to hosts and panelists once again, has said fast growth SMEs. What is that? Is that a fast growth fish and chip shop? No, no, I don't mean fish and chip shops. I mean fast growth SMEs. Well, that, does that mean a, a, a fast growth construction business? No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, I mean like, you know, technology-based businesses. Oh, you mean technology-based businesses. And indeed, who is the decision maker? Who's the decision maker? As I said, most people go too broad. The narrower that we can get, the better everything's going to be. Uh, Bruce says, business, business executives battling burnout. Business executives is the target, target audience. The problem is battling burnout. But however, if Barry says business executives is the person in mining as an industry where they're flying in, flying out all over the place, the conversation about burnout gets far more specific. When we name our target audience, it's, it's so helpful if we just call out their names. It's like me yelling out Evan or Linda or Gail or Heather or Philip or whatever your name might be, Calvin, right? If I yell out your name, you pay attention. So the closer we can get, the, uh, the, 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 the more focused that we can be, right? That's awesome. Now, somebody said physiotherapist business owner. Now, a physiotherapist, yeah, we can name them, we can find them, we can figure out their headaches. We can buy a list of physiotherapists. We can go into LinkedIn and just search for the physiotherapist and invite all the physiotherapists to connect with us. But, you know, we can't find people that uh, help people with their ailments, right? That could be anyone, right? It's too broad, but a physiotherapist. So if we turn around and we say physio, what are some of the challenges that physios have? And I know that everyone on this call could help Heather identify challenges for a physio. What are the challenges that the physios have? Now, this is not about what Heather does for a living. It's the challenges that the physio has. It's the headaches that they have before they know they need them. So the physio might need foot traffic. They might need better Google reviews. They might need uh, less turnover of staff, right? What are all the different challenges that physios have? So, for example, I'm going to write down LTV. When you're a physio, people come in, they book six appointments, and then you never hear from them ever again. Here are five strategies to, to increase the lifetime value of your physio. One, pro, one person, one problem. Life becomes so much easier. Then when it comes to the product, well, Heather can come up with a high no-brainer that specifically solves that particular problem, or she could pull together a bunch of different things. And that is because... Everyone is at a different stage in the funnel. All your different customers and clients are at a different stage in the funnel. And they're all going to go through this process. And this is what you need to do. This is, the, this is the guiding path that you need to be taking them on. You need to attract an opportunity. Then you need to pre-qualify that lead. You don't want to be having conversations with people that can't afford you. Afford you. If you pre-qualify them, you want to book that appointment because you need to have that meeting. Then before the meeting, you want to elevate anticipation. Get them excited about the meeting. This is a big failure. I see a lot of people, they book the meeting and then they do nothing in the lead up to the meeting. And then the person cancels or reschedules or ghosts them and they wonder what went wrong. Do you have a system or mechanism to get people excited before the meeting, before they show up, to handle some of those objections before the meeting actually happens? Then you host the meeting and it either goes really well or it goes mediocre or it goes bad. You might get a firm yes on the call. You might even take a payment on the call, a deposit or full payment. Or they might like say, hey, this is great. I want to come back to you. You might need to do a little bit of follow-up. Then, of course, you close. And uh, closing is where most people think sales and marketing ends. No, no. Then you need to onboard. And the reason why sales and marketing ends when you get your newest, latest, greatest client to a place called First Win. When you get your person to a place called First Win, then they are sticky they're less likely to churn. They're more likely to refer other people because they're so happy. All that post-purchase dissonance or buyer's doubt evaporates and then they are truly your client. Yes, indeed, guys and gals, that there is a typical B2B sales and marketing funnel. That there is the journey. We break this down into tofu, mofu, bofu. And that stands for top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of the funnel. Now, today. We are talking about the bottom of the funnel. We're talking about coming up with an offer that when you're down here and you explain it to the person, they go, aha, uh -huh, I get you. No, that sounds great. That, that, uh, that matches everything that we need.
But however, I also said that I wanted to give you an accelerator. For every single one of our strategies today, I wanted to give you an accelerator. And this here indeed is accelerator one. And accelerator one is for the tofu stage. Now, that's the top of the funnel. Now, if you've just gone through this process called the monetization mantra, if you've broken down your target audience and you've had a look at everything that they've got and you've gone, okay, well, this here is a physio. Their biggest headache is lifetime value. I can put together a high no-brainer for them. You could just as easily pull together a gift for them to get them in your funnel, which is why I call this accelerator number one. Having some sort of gift of high perceived value for your target audience is going to help you bring new customers and clients into your world, and it's going to help them educate them about what it is that you do so that when you have that conversation, it's going to be super duper easy to close. So for example, this is John Weichardt here, and he pulled this together for the tofu stage, the top of the funnel. And he says, I got 73 leads via LinkedIn, 12 meetings booked, two sales of my core product, and I have two more decisions pending. I did that in two weeks. Let's break that down. 73 leads. His channel was LinkedIn. We can talk about that later if you're interested. He got 12 meetings booked. So that's probably about 15%. Of those 12 meetings, he was able to sell two high no-brainers immediately, right? Two out of, two out of 12. Not a bad conversion rate, not so great. He says he's got two more decisions pending. So if he closes all four, that works out to be a one in three conversion rate. If he closes three, that's one in four, which uh, which is a great outcome if you're closing as early as the first conversation or in the second conversation, like uh, like John here. And he did that by working through the monetization mantra and he created an item of high perceived value to his target audience. One person, one problem, one product. The product was the gift. And then he did it again. He did it for his meeting. That's what he did. One person, one problem, one product. He created a meeting, again, specifically designed to address the headaches, the obstacles, the aspirations, and desires of his target audience. Hey, guys and gals, I was thinking if we have time, and I believe we do, I might do a quick technology teardown of the exact tools and steps that he used to make that happen. Would you like to see a rapid fire technology teardown? I want someone right now to write the words tech teardown. If one person writes tech teardown, I'll make this happen. I got a hells yeah, I got a yes, I got a thumbs up, I got a couple of people writing tech teardown. All right, this is absolutely great. Thank you so much. So what I'm gonna show you is an example here of an experience. An experience for your future customers and clients that is indeed an extremely intuitive experience. Tell me that you can see my second screen right now. Let's make sure the technology works. Can you see the second screen? Maybe just write second screen or yep or something like that and I'll know that you can see it. Excellent, thank you, Margaret. This here is a gift of high perceived value to a specific target audience. How to book more conversations with very interested prospects. This is something that we call a lead capture gateway. It's a type of landing page. You're probably familiar with landing pages. How to book more conversations with very interested prospects. Landing pages outconvert just about any type of page. So the best home pages in the world convert at about 2%. The worst landing pages convert at around 10%. So it's a five-fold increase. This particular style of landing page consistently converts at over 30%. So you might spend a ton of time drumming up interest to get people to your website or your landing pages. And out of every 100 people you get to the page, only two convert. Wouldn't it be better if one in three converted? So you could get 100 people to a page, get two, or you could get six people to a page, you get two, right? That's the power of a lead capture gateway. The gift is of high perceived value to my target audience. There is nothing else on the page, no distractions. It begins with a no-brainer question. There's that language again. It's a no-brainer question. They look at it. What best describes your situation? Most new client relationships start with a conversation. I click it and it happens. I'm in. I've started. I didn't even have to hit go or next. And that is because this particular tool harnesses the principles of gamification. This is game layer theory. I've started now. And as a human, my sense of commitment kicks in and I need to see this through. What best reflects the situation? I'm the boss. 
What's your turnover? Now I'm collecting a little bit of data and I'm pre-qualifying the lead. This is super counterintuitive. But what I've done here is I've asked three questions and I've boosted the conversion rate because I've left the delicate stuff to the very end. First name, last name, email address. Most people start with first name, last name, email address, maybe a phone number. What I've done is I've started with some, some questions there. All right, what's this? Uh, what type of business do you have? What, what's happening here is that now the person is being invited to book a strategy call. This is, uh, do you want to get more meetings for May? This is a page that's no longer live. I can tell by this little funny thing in the left here. Uh, and as I'm banging through, I'm collecting more data about my lead again. But can you see how intuitive this is? As the person answers the questions, provides their phone number. By the way, this is not asking for the first name, last name, email address again. It doesn't need that information. But the person has gone from, hey, I'd like this free resource so I can book more meetings with very interested prospects to do I want a private mapping call so I can get more meetings from May? Uh, where are you based? Important information. I love this final question. <laughs> Where's your head at? Do you show up? Yes, I do show up. People book meetings and don't show up. All right, at this point in time, I can say, great, book your call with me. But no, I've given two options here. Would you like to book a 45-minute call or would you like to book a 15-minute call? I've provided two options. What's better, one option or two options? One option is actually really yes or no. Two options is either or. And in doing so, I can increase the conversion rate. Three, two, one, wham, bam, and shazam, and the person can now book a call with John. All the way through the process and book a call with John. Now, I'm not going to book, uh, what is it, a B2B funnel mapping strategy with John Inglesos. I don't want to fill his calendar or diary. Now, that there was an extremely intuitive experience for the prospect. They wanted the gift, which is one person, one problem, one product. I pre-qualified the lead got some data that I found useful. And if they met my criteria, I gave them the opportunity to book a meeting, which was also once again, one person, one problem, one product. Cool, rock and roll. Uh, and I manage that all using one simple tool called B2B Dash, which means I can see right here how many leads I got over a 30 day period, 321 leads. I built out my lead capture gateway using that. I can see how many bookings I've got. I built out my, uh, that's a 20% conversion rate, yeah? 20% conversion from leads to meetings. I can, uh, I, I got my bookings by building up my appointment builder and I put everyone in a series of emails and I can see how many people are in my emails with an open rate of 70%. Wild, huh? And that is because this particular tool integrates with your own email inbox or database. So it ends up being a one-to-one -one email sent from you. That there, guys and gals, is a mini micro tech teardown from the perspective of somebody else using the going through the experience themselves. And the back end is how you get to see the data when they come through. And that is because two things systems equal sanity plus automation equals freedom. Woohoo! All righty. Proposals. What did we learn? What did we learn? Well, if you want to simplify it or even eliminate your proposals completely, it, it helps very much so if you can focus on that monetization mantra, one person, one problem, one product. And that plays out throughout the entire funnel. One person, one problem, one product to get the lead. One person, one problem, one product to book the meeting. One person, one problem, one product to sell what it is that you do. Most people go from a black art, something for everyone. And the ones that are really growing, the ones that are really scaling, focus on one narrow target audience and grow from there. Like Marcus here. Uh, it's now been just six weeks since I started your training and two amazing things have happened. I'm now working with clients who pay me a lot more, seven times what I was charging. Specialists charge more. And I've also secured double my, double my usual projects, seven times more, double the usual projects. 
Isn't that amazing? And that is because once again, Marcus did three things. He actually stopped writing proposals. He switched to three Ps. He changed up his pricing to match the expectations of his new target audience. And then he pulled together a package, a self-closing offer, which helped people get to yes faster. So let's do that right now. Moving on to pricing. Does anyone know who this guy is? Who's this guy? How much would you pay this guy to, I don't know, play his violin at your house, at your wedding? This is him busking in the, in one of the, in the New York subway. I'm not sure what stop, but there he is busking in the New York, New, New, New York subway. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Calvin said, is that Marky Mark? No, it's not Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch. Showing my age there. Younger people would say, Marky Mark, you mean the uh, Mark Wahlberg, the actor and the uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> Ailey has got it. Ali has got it. It's Joshua Bell. Joshua Bell is a famous violinist. Uh, how much would you pay this guy? In this funny, really interesting experiment, he decided to play the violin in, a new, in the New York subway to see how much money he would earn. Now, this guy is the best of the best. I mean, like he fills out concert halls. People pay hundreds of dollars for tickets. He's playing a Stradivarius that was made in like 1765. I mean, like the violin's worth over a million dollars, right? And there he is in the New York subway. You can tell I don't know how to play a violin. <laughs> I know how to play little violins. <laughs> but he decided to run this experiment and he thought that he might earn somewhere around $1,000 in a day. He actually thought that something like 100 people would recognize him and, uh, and, he'd, and he'd earn $1,000 and he'd give it to charity. How much did he earn? He earned about $53. And only about four people recognized him. And of those $53, $20 was from one of the people who recognized him. That's how much he earned. Yeah. And I don't know if he was there for a couple hours or an entire day. I don't know, but that's what he earned. And the reason is, is that outside of context, nobody knows how much you're worth. Outside of the right context, outside of the right frame, no one knows whether you're any good or not. I'll tell you what a pro violinist could listen and go, wow, that guy's good. But no one else would know. And it's the same with whatever it is that you do. So if you're like Naomi, who's a copywriter, or Marcus, who's a photographer, or Kath, who's a consultant to aspiring book writers, nobody knows whether Kath is the best or Naomi's the best or, or Marcus is the best because they have no frame by which to judge them by. There are no comparisons, which is why... Which is why I talked about before about when is the best time to share your rate card. And the answer is probably never. Most people don't get value. And when I say don't get value, when they work with you, I'm absolutely certain they get value. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in business. But however, they don't get value. They don't understand this idea of value. And what I find most typically is that a lot of people spend a whole bunch of time trying to sell things. And those things are things like your time. We don't, want it, we don't want that to happen. They don't get value. So rather than talking about things, rather than talking about the time that they're going to get from you and the amount of effort that you're going to put in, what you need to be doing is selling outcomes. Right from the beginning, one person, one problem, one product. See, they don't get value. They don't get time. They don't get all these other concepts because they don't value their own input when they do things. They don't value their own time when they put in effort to do anything. So how are they ever going to be able to value you? And outside of context, they've got no idea that you are good or better than anyone else in your industry. So just as a, a brief aside, for example, how do you go about booking meetings with very interested prospects right now? How do you go about booking those meetings? We've talked about the monetization mantra, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, one person, one problem, one product, one person, one problem, one product, one person, one problem, one product. How do you book meetings right now? Because I can tell you, I jump onto LinkedIn every day and there's a whole bunch of people on LinkedIn applying the BNP approach. Hey, James, let's catch up and explore ways that we can work together. Hey, James, I'm going to be in town. Let's, uh, would you like to grab a coffee sometime? Hey, James, why don't you book a, a Zoom call with me and I can show you how I can make your life uh, 
better in a thousand gazillion different ways. Hi, James, I am an SEO consultant. Do you need SEO consultants right now? Here is my Calendly link. Let's book a time with me right now. Blah. This I call the BNP approach. BNP stands for begging and pleading. Hey, let's catch up and explore ways that I could take your money. <laughs> that's called the begging and pleading approach. And that's where most people are at, the BNP stage. However, if you apply the monetization mantra, you can graduate to the A and AWP stage. AWP stands, stands, stands for an appointment with purpose. So if I bring this back to the three Ps from a little bit earlier, and I bring this back to, uh, I think it was Heather, and we had a look at the third piece here, we could have a strategy call, which was all about boosting LTV. So it's an LTV booster call. It's not, hey, let's catch up and explore ways that I can take your money. It's let's catch up and discuss ways that we can boost your LTV. This is called an AWP, an appointment with purpose purpose, not some vague invitation to catch up. It's an opportunity for you to talk about what outcomes you can deliver really, really fast as quickly as that first call. Like Troy here, I was on the phone talking with a potential client about the strategy sessions we offer to prospects normally for free. I went through your pro the process you teach, breaking it down into outcomes, things, and feelings like you teach. Suddenly I realized that if I offer this meeting for free, I'm going to sound like an idiot. <laughs> so when he asked how much the session would cost, I plucked a number from the sky, $1,600 for the strategy session and offered that. He immediately said yes, and that's how we now do business. We now get paid to pitch and the quality of clients has vastly improved too. So Troy graduated from begging and pleading to appointment with purpose to getting paid to pitch. And yes, guys and gals, we have hit the one hour mark of our two hours together and you have unlocked your third participation bonus. Woohoo! This is our paid to pitch planner. This is about transforming your vague invitation to catch up your boring discovery call or your breakthrough session. So boring. <laughs> I'm going to give you our paid to pitch planner as a participation bonus. And here's what I want from you to get that. I want you to tell me where are you at right now? Are you at the BNP stage? Are you at the AWP stage? Or are you at the P2P stage? Where are you at? Or you can write one, two, three, if that's even too hard for you. Or you could write BNP, AWP, P2P, any of those things. And be as honest and vulnerable as you can, because I know that there's going to be a ton of people on this call right now that are at the B and P stage. Thank you, Esther and Mark, for saying as such and Bernadette, because I want everyone to be aware that where you are at right now is where most people are at and you are not alone. Most people think that entrepreneurship is a lonely journey. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it's only lonely if you let it. If you join a community, community equals clarity or find opportunities like this to work with other people, even if this is a, was an automated evergreen call and you've participated to the best of your ability, you will feel like you are not alone. Did I call this an automated evergreen email? An, auto, an automated evergreen webinar, uh, which occasionally we run, we transform these webinars into automated evergreen webinars. Even if it's one of those things and you're playing along to the best of your abilities, you will feel like you are not alone. And that is because community equals clarity. So once again, this is the third and it might be the final participation bonus, which means if you haven't participated yet, you will not get this, our paid to pitch planner sent to you sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, Neil. One, two, and three in the next 24 hours. Rock and roll. Thank you, mate. Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel. Let's bring it to the bottom of the funnel. I asked the question before, do you have a rate card? Give me, do you have a rate card? Give me a yes or no. Do you have a product suite? Have you costed and itemized the services you offer? Here's my question for you. If you do and you've pulled it together, should you share it? Now, rate card equals yes, says Mark. Tracy says it or not. Calvin says yes. All right, here's my question. If you do have something like that, should you share it? So first and foremost, I would say it is a very valuable exercise to pull together a rate card. 
On the left, I can see that we've got a uh, landscape maintenance service calendar. And this is crazy. The guy's got a turf. He's got annual color. I'm assuming it's a he. could be a she. She's got ground cover. She's got shrubs. She's got trees. And then it's broken down into all these different things. These are all the different things that a landscape gardener would do. You are the same. But the reality is, is you probably haven't ever stopped to think about all the different things that you do for customers and clients that are generally random and ad hoc and uh, you're being reactive rather than proactive. At least this guy's pulled together a calendar. There's a system. There's a, there's, there's, a, there's a sanity to the system. There's a method to the madness. Rock and roll. This is someone who's pulled together a rate card for a, uh, it looks like a web dev business. And this person has put them on their website. And I can see how much a strategy is going to cost which is, what does that say? Uh, 17,000. I can see a visual strategy is 4,000. I can see a content strategy is 3,000. We've got web apps down at the bottom here. We've got a whole bunch of different prices. And I was able to take a screen grab after visiting this person's website. But the question is, should you share it? And ethicist, ethicist says, for internal reference only. I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's like when you see those documents, for internal references only. Should you share it? No. And that is because like Joshua Bell in the New York subway, someone can look at that and they don't know whether, they don't know what that means. They don't know whether that's good value. They don't know whether that's cheap or expensive out of context and they will end up price shopping. So get them in at the top of the funnel with a gift, book a meeting with an AWP, maybe even a paid to pitch, uh, maybe even get paid to pitch. And then when you're on the call, do you then introduce your rate card? When you're on the call, when you're having a strategy, should you do it then? Again, my answer is no. Give them a three-part offer. That's what 3PO's stand for, a three-part offer. It's not uh, an Android from a galaxy far, far away. That's what 3PO stands for, a three-part offer. I asked you the question before. I showed you an example where someone could book a, uh, was it a 45-minute meeting or a 15-minute meeting. Those were the choices. A or B? Remember that? I gave that choice. Now, pretty much everyone, just about everyone, not everyone, but pretty much everyone books 45. Why did I not just say book a 45 meeting? Because if there's only one option, that one option is yes or no. When you give someone one option, you've actually given them two, yes or no. When I give them two options, I give them an either or. There is a third option. And the third option is no. But when we give people two options, the great thing is, is that we're doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of a something, something with people's brains where they switch from either yes or no to an either or. They begin to evaluate which one of those options are better for them. And that drives them forward in their decision making. Is that a good tip, guys and girls? Is that a good piece of advice to be able to give them an either or option rather than just give them one option? Is that useful? All right. If two... Thank you very much. If two is better than one, what's better than two? And there's a clue on the screen. What's better than two? And I'm thinking, oh, is it going to be three? He's called it a three-part offer. Is it going to be a three? Yeah, absolutely, three. A three is better than two. And the reason why three is better is when we've got three offers, we can anchor your price uh, in, in relation to those particular offers. Because in your space, value is relative. It's a hard thing to communicate. There are no, there are no benchmarks. There, are no, there is no sort of like a listing that people can go to to find out whether you're a good value or not. So we need to help them on that particular journey. So three-part offers. And by the way, now that I've seen this, you'll see, now that I say this, you'll see this everywhere, particularly, for example, in a wine restaurant. So you go to a wine restaurant and what you'll notice is that there is a bottle of wine that is, I don't know, $300, I don't know, or $100, depending on the restaurant. Let's say $100, right? So there's a bottle of wine there and it is a $100 bottle of wine. And uh, that's usually top of the menu, right? That's, that's one of the options in there, right? Then there might be another bottle of wine in there. And that second bottle of wine is, are you ready? Uh, let's say 20, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, let's say 20, $4. So we've got these two spectrums here. We've jumped on the, we're arrived at the restaurant. We're looking at the wine list and we're looking at the different options that are available to us. Now, already we do have a, a rough guide of how much uh, wine should cost. And we have a look and there's an option there, which is $100. And we go, no, that's too much. 
Uh, but however, you know, it's okay, it's going to be that type of restaurant. Cool. And then there's another option in there that says $24. And you go, oh, yeah, that actually sounds good. $24 might indeed be the cheapest or somewhere near the lowest, the lowest end. And then next to that, you find another bottle of wine, which is 28. One, two, three. What bottle of wine do you think most people will buy? What bottle of wine do you think most people will buy? One, two, or three? Absolutely. They look at it and they go, okay, $100 is too expensive. That seems reasonable in comparison, even though I might be a cask drinker at home and I spend no more than $8 for a cask of wine, <laughs> right? But however, they don't want to look like a cheapskate in the restaurant. And this one is French, whereas this one is local and it's only $4 more. So they go, oh, okay, I think I'll go to the $28 bottle of wine. What we've just done is an anchor pricing exercise. It's an anchor pricing exercise. What we have done is I have created an anchor at the top, which will make anything that I say afterwards cheap in comparison or affordable in comparison. That's what that is. I have, I've anchored, I've anchored from the top and then I've anchored from the bottom. One, two, three. We call these the premium, the patsy, and the preferred. The premium, the patsy, and the preferred. And this is what we mean by a three-part offer. So if you do, for example, have a meeting with someone, they've come into your world at tofu stage, maybe you've given them a gift to get them into your world, they've booked a meeting with you because you've delivered your appointment with purpose, you've now got to the bottom of the funnel and you're having a conversation. There was a couple of people a little bit earlier that said, it's very difficult to explain what I do and it's a six-month commitment. Here's what you do. You walk in and you say, here is the six-month program. And this here is big ticket, lots of money. Then we have the, um, you know, get results right now program. This has, I don't know, this has uh, five, five benefits over six months. Here's what we're going to do over six months. One, two, three, four, five, and you're going to get all these amazing outcomes. Isn't that terrific? Then we go, okay, we've got this particular option where you can get uh, one benefit. And this one, the six months here is going to be $30,000. And this one over here is $2,400. But however, I've got this particular option here and it's got two benefits or even three. And it is uh, $2,800. And it's a high no brainer. Indeed, it's probably tackling one or two of the pieces of the broader, broader picture. It's much easier for somebody else to say, yes, that's what I want. I'm going to make that decision right here, right now. And then when they are part of your world, then when they're part of your world, you can introduce all the different things that you can do for them. We've seen this transform people's businesses again and again and again because they're selling too much too soon, they're finding it extremely difficult to get the clothes. I mean, like we had a guy come into our world, John Whitehead, and I don't think I have this testimonial, but I do remember that he had about five or six clients that were on the fence, on the hook, and trying to sell too much too soon, too big picture. And uh, he created an audit. This particular piece became an audit, and uh, it was a $3,000 audit. And I remember getting this testimonial where he said, I've got two clients since the call since having a conversation with one of our crew. All right, accelerator time. Accelerator time. This is accelerator number two. You met Naomi a little bit earlier. I told you her story. She was the freelance copywriter. She acquired target audience clarity. She reframed her offer to reflect actual needs. She packaged up her services as things. She began to attract better fit clients who valued her services more and more. She built a waiting list. She doubled her rates and then she doubled her rates again. Here is the accelerator. Are you ready? My first little accelerator was creating some sort of opt-in gift at the top of the funnel. You might want to create an AWP to get them booking a little bit faster. This is a completely underestimated accelerator. Do you have a cart page? This is so simple. Do you have a way to take the money? Now, <laughs> right from the outset, I said, what's the best type of proposal? No proposal, right? If you've transferred certainty and someone says, yeah, I'm in, you, you can say, you can say, well, if we want to get things started right now, the best way to get started is a deposit. If it's a middle manager, they might not be able to help you. But if it's a small business owner, sure, 
They pull out their credit cards and they put down 5%, 10%, whatever it's going to be. Or maybe they will pay in full for their high no-brainer. You get me? Raise your hand and let me know. Give me a yes or a no whether you've got a cart page, whether you've got some sort of cart page built into your business. And incidentally, but a little bit earlier, I just showed you our technology platform, B2B-.io, and I showed you how you can use it to get the lead. I showed you how you could use it to book the meeting. I showed you how to use it to send emails in sequences. What I didn't show you, and I don't think I have time, but what I didn't show you is how to create amazing, elegant cart pages like that in the tool itself and tracking it all in one place. I know what it's like to run multiple technology tools. I know what it's like to have built a Franken funnel, a Frankenstein of a funnel where you got one tool here and one tool there and this tool here and that's still there and then you stitch them here and then you stitch them there, right? Have you ever been there? And then you use Zapier or IFTTT to stitch it all together or you've got it all jumbled together in Excel spreadsheets and the whole bit. What we do, we take the lead at the top of the funnel, we pre-qualify them at the top of the funnel, we book the meeting as we move into the middle of the funnel, we elevate anticipation for the meeting, we have the conversation that happens between two humans. Unfortunately, it can't be automated yet. Let's see what AI brings. Then we follow up after the meeting using B2B-.io, and then we take the money using B2B-.io, getting uh, inviting people to pay up front or go on recurring payment plans, and then we onboard the client using b2b-.io, tofu, mofu, bofu. Rock and roll. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not sure. Uh, I remember, I remember the first time that I was on the phone and the woman's name was Wendy and I'm selling over the phone. And I remember this so clearly because my business partner, John Inglesos, was about to get married the following day. And I was staying in a hotel with my wife and my kids were staying with my parents and we were staying in a hotel in Byron Bay. Australians will know what, what Byron Bay is like. Um, very fancy place. Uh, I think the Hemsworths have houses there. John was getting married in Byron Bay. We were staying at a hotel in Byron Bay. I had a sales call with a woman called Wendy, right? And um, and my wife cleared out of the hotel room, had to walk around the grounds while I did the sales call with Wendy. And I got to the end of the call and it was for a $9,600 project or a package, $9,600 package. And I couldn't believe in my, in my brain that she would pay $9,600 over the phone. So I said, but what we can do is we can break it into three payments of 3,600. And inside I'm like, oh my goodness, I hope she says yes. <laughs> We're paying for this expensive hotel in Byron Bay. I hope she says yes. And she said, yeah, that's not a problem. Would you like my credit card right now? I didn't have a way to take the money. So I said, yeah, sure, not a problem. And I took down her credit card details on a notepad and pen and paper. I knew that I could do it because I knew that within our business somewhere we could do it, but I was in a hotel room. I didn't have a way to take the money. So I wrote down the, uh, the, the credit cards, right? And then, and then she hung up and I went, yes, $3,600. Yes, in three payments of three. Yes. And then my phone rang again. It's Wendy. Oh, no, she's changed her mind. Oh, no. Maybe she's asking why the credit card didn't payment go through. I pick up the phone. Yeah, hi, Wendy. What's up? She says, you know what I was thinking? Can't I just pay $9,600 now? Save some money, pay all up front. <laughs> Boom. Mind exploded. Having a way to take the money is a powerful thing to have. It'll reframe the way that you think about sales. Absolutely, totally, completely. Not easy to set up, but when you do, super powerful. A lot easier to set up if it's all part of another tool that you're using. All right, proposals, pricing, self-closing offers, rock and roll. Um, Hey, feeling guys and gals, are you having fun? Are you getting value? Are you getting value? Are you having fun? Hey, hey, I would like to know. I'm having a ton of fun. I I'm absolutely having a ton of fun. What I would like to do right now is that I would like to play a little bit of a game. This is a self-assessment that I would like to pay. And I'm going to introduce you to this little self-assessment. Then I'm going to introduce you to a couple of different ways that you can work with us if you're interested in that. And then I'm going to finish on a game changer. And the game changer is something called our fuse method. And our fuse method is where I'm going to show you how to assemble a self-closing offer. And I've saved the best for last because you wouldn't be able to pull together a self-closing offer. You wouldn't be able to follow our fuse method unless you've done the things that we've done so far. 
Or as Andre says, rather than just rethinking the marketing of the business, of your business, these guys force you to reimagine how you do business or more correctly, how you do what you do better, cheaper, faster, smarter, and save time. Follow the steps, do the exercises. Don't think too much. Has anyone ever said that to you? Don't think too much. Just do it and you'll be richly rewarded. In most of our lives, people are telling us to think harder. You know, you've got to work to get the result. And we're fed these lines about hustle culture. You know, you've got to work, you've got to hustle. The reality is, is that if you've got systems, because they equal sanity, if you've got automation, because automation equals freedom, if you've got community, community equals clarity, you don't have to work quite so hard. So thank you for those wonderful, wonderful words. Loving it. This is awesome. Great insight. Value bombs everywhere. Well, I think this might be our second last time to participate. I don't think I've got any more participation bonuses, although I do have a sticky bonus. <laughs> I do have a sticky bonus. And the sticky bonus is something called our Tofu Bofu Mofu Roadmap. And our Tofu Bofu Mofu Roadmap is something that you get for sticking around to the end. And our Tofu Bofu Mofu Roadmap includes, I think, at least 16 email templates that you can use to get people from the top of the funnel to the middle of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. But here is our little self-assessment exercise. Self-assessment exercise. S and A self-assessment. All right, on the screen right now, you can see this is systems equal sanity. The higher that you go up this little indice on the left, the more systems that you have. The further that you go on the right, the more automation that you have. All right, further up, more systems. To the right, more freedom that we have. We have four boxes here. One, two, three, four quadrants. Tell me, guys and gals, what is the worst quadrant to be in? What quadrant do you not want your business to be in? One, two, three, or four? Three, absolutely. Got to be three. Absolutely. Who lives in number three? In number three lives, lives a guy or a woman, are you ready, called Harry the Hunter, <laughs> or it could be Harriet the Hunter, Harry the Hunter. Do you know what Harry does or Harriet does? They hunt for work, they pitch for work, and then they deliver the work. And then when they've delivered the work, they hunt for the work, then they pitch for the work, and then they deliver the work. And then they hunt for the work, and then they pitch for the work, and then they deliver it. And then they hunt, and then they pitch, and then they deliver, and then they hunt, pitch, deliver, hunt, pitch, deliver, hunt, pitch, deliver, because they've got no systems and they've got no automation, which means that they do it all themselves. They don't have any target audience clarity. They'll take on any work from anyone with a checkbook and a pulse. And Harry the Hunter can do that for years. And I've met people in my world that have been Harry the Hunter for years and they're never getting anywhere. They're getting, getting, getting nowhere fast or nowhere slow. Harry the Hunter. We don't want to be Harry the Hunter. Number one, what's number one? Now, number one is, uh, this is Betty. Uh, this is Busy Betty. Well, let's call her Busy Bettina <laughs> or uh, Barry. <laughs> I don't know. Busy Betty. Busy Bettina, Busy Barry. Now, Busy Betty, she has systems. She has systems. She knows her target audience. She probably has a process. Uh, she, uh, she has an offer that's consistent. Uh, the right people are coming into her world, but she doesn't have any automation. And if she doesn't have automation, she can actually have quite a good sustainable business, but she's very busy. She's busy all the time because she's doing all those different things that we talked about, which can be automated. She's attracting the leads, pre-qualifying the leads, booking the meetings, elevating anticipation, managing follow-up, onboarding. She's doing all these things herself. So Betty is busy. In a minute, I'm going to ask you where you are in this particular quadrant set. Number four, we have Field of Dreams, Fred. Can anyone remember the, the famous line from the Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come. Unfortunately, in the real world, it doesn't really work that way, does it? Build it and they will come. 
It doesn't. And I know people that go, what I'm going to do is I just need to pull together my website and then I'll pull together my branding. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull together a funnel. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do an automated webinar. And then the automated webinar is going to be supported by a self-liquidating offer, which is a, which is a slow, some people call it a tripwire. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put people through a sequence and then at the end of it, and then six months go by and they launch the, the, the thing. And because they don't have any systems, they don't have any target audience clarity. It's all about them. It's all push marketing rather than pull marketing. And it just collapses and it fails. Now, once upon a time, I have to admit, I was Field of Dreams Fred. I'm far more inclined to say, I will build it. And then I get lots of joy in pulling it together. And then I launch it. And I've launched to crickets. Miserable. Field of Dreams Fred. Top right-hand corner, what do we have? We have crushing it. Yes, this is crushing it. Crushing it, Chris. And that could be Christina. Yay, crushing it, Chris. My handwriting's just getting worse and worse, isn't it? That's crushing it, Chris. Woo, crushing it, Chris, has lots of systems, has lots of automation, and that's why they're in the top right-hand corner. All right, here is my self-assessment for you guys and gals. Do, do try to be honest. What quadrant are you or who are you? Are you Harry, Betty, Fred, or Chris? You let me know. And I think that you know already that the place that you don't want to be is down here. This is no good. We don't want to be part of that world. We can make a living here. Well, maybe if it works out, we can make a living there. <laughs> it's good to have that skill at least. Let's have a look. I've got a, a couple of Bettys. I've got, I got a couple of friends. <laughs> I've got some other people. <laughs> uh, I got a, I, I've seen a couple of ones. I've got a couple of threes, a couple of fours. Of course, here's where I want you to be. I want you to be with crushing it, Chris. And indeed, there's even a there's even a, an elite little little spot of people within here as well, right up the top here, which are in the ten percent of the crushing it, Chris's. And the ten percent of the crushing it, Chris's, way up there, big smiley people, they realise that they need one extra thing. They need the automation, because automation equals freedom. They need the systems because systems equal sanity. Today, we've largely focused on systems. I gave you a sneak peek at a little bit of automation. What's the third piece? Community, because community equals clarity. Now, as I was running through the things that I was talking about today, I want you to observe that most tactics constantly change. And most people that you speak to online or the people in your Facebook thread have some sort of agenda. You know what? The, uh, I don't know, the web developer will tell you that you need a new website. The SEO person is going to tell you that you need SEO. The ads person is going to tell you to run ads. The podcast person is going to tell you that you need a podcast. The book person is going to tell you that you need a book. The Facebook group person is going to tell you that you need a Facebook group. And you know what? These are all good things to have and do. They are. But they're not the first thing to focus your attention on, are they? No. The tactics might constantly change. Everyone has an agenda, but the reality is, is that if you've got a stinky offer, you're going nowhere fast. You could have an, a, an amazing website, looks beautiful, doesn't speak to their headaches, their obstacles, their aspirations and desires. You could have an amazing podcast that's got thousands of people listening to it. But if you don't have an offer or a way to get them into your funnel at the top, it's not going to fly. Same with the Facebook group, no way to book meetings. It's the fundamentals where things are at. Tactics constantly change and everyone has an agenda, but there are a few things that never change. And they are the idea or the concept of having a super powerful offer and a system or a structure to get people into your world. I've been teaching and training the stuff, the same stuff for about 10 years now. And the fundamentals have never changed. And that's because we're in the business of streamlining, automating, and accelerating the entire B2B client journey. Indeed, I believe, and this is a very un-Australian thing to say, I believe that we are the best in the world at doing this. If you're here because, as I said before, you run a business and you sell to other businesses, if you're a solo business owner or a micro business owner, if you sell something that's complex and you know that systems equal sanity, community equals clarity, automation equals freedom, we were put on this planet to help someone just like you in three different ways. Plus, I would like to think that we do so while also having a whole lot of fun. I asked you before, are you having fun? And I was gratified to get a whole bunch of really, really positive results, uh, responses. 
uh, it's so important that we have fun while we're doing what it is that we do. We tend to forget that because we're so in the trenches. Whereas, so, what does they say? We're in the reeds. We're doing all the nitty gritty and the stuff all the time. And we've got these constant ups and downs, highs and lows. It's so important that you can work with other people that get you and want to have a whole lot of fun, which is why right here, right now, I want to invite a couple of you guys and gals to, to join our Blazer program. And indeed, I'm going to make it really, really simple for you. I've pulled together something called our Blazer Bundle. What are What is a B2B Blazer? A B2B Blazer is, are you ready? Is someone exactly like you. Is someone exactly like you. You are a B2B Blazer. If you are, I said it before, a solo or micro B2B business owner, you're selling probably knowledge or expertise to somebody else. What you do is complex. You're good at what it is, whatever it is that you do. Uh, and explaining it is a little bit difficult. And there are generally multiple touches and stages. The difference between someone who is a blazer and not a blazer is that most people muddle along. They muddle along trialing one thing, jumping from one thing to the next thing. A blazer has decision clarity. We help them to the best of our abilities, focus on the things that are going to make the greatest impact in their lives. Indeed, our B2B blazers get 36 private group mentoring called a year, 12 open day masterclasses. We're part of one of those now. Four boot camps and accelerators, private Facebook group, a bunch of other stuff. And we sell these boot camps and accelerators for around $2,400 per ticket. And we host for a year. I mentioned before that we've got one coming up just around the corner. Uh, I think it's on uh, Intelligent Offers, and then we're going to follow that also up with a boot camp. Community is clarity. Indeed, it's almost priceless. Uh, Paula here spent $10,000 on a mastermind retreat, $10,000, and the flights and the accommodation. Then she spent 45 minutes on a call with you, one of our people, and that was better. <laughs> I now know where we need to focus, decision clarity, and my business partner are finally on the same page. $10,000 or 45 minutes on a strategy call. Guys and girls, I'm going to give you uh, the opportunity to book a strategy call with a member of my crew. A little bit later, we can work through a process called a B2B ecosystem offer mapping call. And hopefully, you'll get the same level of clarity as Paula, which she considered to be worth more than a $10,000 mastermind. Community equals clarity. It's almost priceless. Automation equals freedom. I gave you a little bit of a glimpse into B2B Dash a little bit earlier. We've spent just shy of a million dollars in blood, sweat, and tears and money building a platform designed specifically for someone just like you. The funnel builder, the pipeline manager, the CRM, all built into one. Everything clicks together the way that it should. And you could buy any, any individual one of any of those pieces. And there's a price on that. But you know what? I'm going to give you the best deal available to you guys and girls right now in just a minute. And that's because you could go out there after you've seen what I've talked about today and you go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sign up for some sort of landing page builder. I mean, like James highlighted that the best home pages convert at 2%, the worst landing pages at 10%. I can do better. I'll save a lot of money just by simply having a better landing page builder because I won't be spending 90% of my time just trying to drum up the work. So you go and spend some money on that. Then you go, you know what? I want to pre-qualify. So I'm going to put together some survey or diagnostic builder. Then you think, you know what? I need that booking tool. I heard someone before mention Calendly. There's schedule once, there's time trade. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, James said the cart thing is a good idea. Those bits get expensive. It's like $149 to pull together to invest in some sort of uh, checkout uh, tool. Uh, then you go, you know what? I'm going to send emails in sequences. I'm going to need some sort of drip tool to manage that happen. Maybe some sort of CRM so I can know who's who in the zoo, some sort of uh, integration tool to pull it all together. And before you know it, you're investing, I don't know, $500 to $1,500 a month in a whole bunch of automation tools that don't necessarily play well together. I would like to give you access to one sweet tech stack all in one place made specifically for someone like you because automation equals freedom plus systems equals sanity. We have over $20,000 worth of courses in the B2B school course library, each of them built with passion and love for someone just like you. 
Things are strategies like selling at scale, LinkedIn for B2B leads, the pointy end, how to sell better quality clients at the pointy end of the, the, of, of the deal, our first funnel roadmap, fully booked roadmap, the recipe, the recipe, our most popular course ever, because it's how to pull together a strategy for the top of the funnel, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. And when someone steps into our world, as I said before, I'd love to give you a session with a member of our crew where we can work out what area of the business, if we fix that, if we improve that, if we repair that, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, what's going to have the greatest impact for you and your business in the least amount of time. Plus, let me remind you, we've got our next boost boot camp coming up very, very soon. So what's the investment to become a B2B blazer or enjoy the benefits of, a, uh, uh, of the blazer bundle? In the blazer bundle, as I said, you get community, you get automation, and you get the training and the support that you need. What's the investment? Here's what I want you to do. If I'm about to introduce the investment, am I going to give you one option or two options or three options? What do you think? Have a guess. Am I going to give you one option or two options or three options? Now, if you were one of our clients and you'd worked through our process, I would be teaching you how to create three bundles that are appropriate for you. Yes, that's what I do, yeah? The premium, the patsy, and the preferred. Three options, three bundles. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut. This is an accelerator. This is anchor pricing against what else is out there. This is anchor pricing against your competitors. So option one, you could sign up for a mastermind. Paula did a mastermind for $10,000. And I'm sure you've signed up for a course that was maybe like, uh, I don't know, 2, 2K, maybe 3K, something like that. Maybe you do that a couple of times a year. You put in $1,600 here and $997 here and $300 here and $27 here, and it all adds up over the course of a year. Yeah, that's one way, that's one way to do it. Or you sign up for a mastermind dive into it with a whole bunch of other people, get really busy. You go to a conference for $3,000, you take copious notes, you get really excited, motivated, you leave, and then you do sweet FA. That's one option, $10,000, $2,000, $3,000, a couple times a year. If that works for you, go do that. Because community equals clarity, and you need it, and the training. What about the tech piece? Well, I gave you a whole bunch of options for different technology pieces before. This tool, that tool, this tool, that tool, this tool, that tool, and you can end up creating a Frankenstein of a funnel. There he is, Frankenstein, with his bolts in his neck. <laughs> That's my picture of Frankenstein. You can draw a Frankenstein of a funnel. Now, if you wanted to get that full tech stack just using our tools, we do have an option. You can go straight to the website and check it out right now for $359 a month, which is a bargain because if you're likely to invest in all those other tools, it's going to cost you somewhere $500, $600, $700. But you know what? Today, I'm going to do a little bit better than that. Is that all right? Everything that we do is in USD. So mastermind, that's one option. Sign up for just the tech piece, that's another option. But you know what? Technology is wonderful. I love technology. You must have technology in your business. But technology without a strategy is like buying a steam train, big locomotive, but without the tracks. So imagine that for a second. You buy a steam train without the tracks. Here's our steam train here. Oh, choo, 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 choo. Here's our steam train. And it's got no tracks. It's a big hunk of technology. But unless you have the tracks, you don't know where to go. These guys over here, they sign up for a, uh, they sign up for a mastermind and they're given the strategy. The strategy, they know how they're given the tracks. They can see where they want to go. They've been given the most efficient path. But without the technology, how do they get to their destination? Plod, 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 plod. That's where they go. However, what if I could give you as I said, $20,000 worth of training. Let's make this font a little bit thicker. $20,000 worth of training. What if I could give you that? And someone to set you on the right path to make sure that you're not focusing on the wrong stuff. What if I could give you the full tech stack to go with that? What if I could give you 36 great mentoring calls for, uh, for summits in any given year? What if I could give you systems, automation, 
and clarity. Systems equals sanity, automation equals freedom, community equals clarity. What, what if I could give you all those different, what if I could give you all those three things? Today, I can do that. I can do that for a simple monthly investment of 300 USD. Now, when you really break this down and you think about this, this here is like spending $100 a month on technology. Wow, what a bargain. $100 a month on training. Holy cow, that's better than one course. $100 on community. It's a bargain. Break it down over the month, which has to be about $75 a week. And I, I can tell you, I spend a lot of money on a lot of dumb stuff. So let's say it's $75 a week. I took Simon and John out to lunch the other day. It was $75, <laughs> US dollars. It's about 100, 100 Australian, something like that. Uh, and it was food and it was, and it was some coffees, $75 gone. Simon caught, uh, no, John caught an Uber home. Simon had some inner city parking. I went on the train because I live in regional in a regional area. That was another seventy-five dollars, right? One hundred fifty dollars just to just to go out and meet with my business partners. We're talking about some essential stuff. Three things that you absolutely need. Or I've got another alternative for you. Or you can get the entire year, the tech stack, all the training, and the community for twenty-four hundred dollars for the entire year. That works out to be just $200 a month. This particular offer right here, this one is limited. It's limited to, uh, it was 10 people. Now I think it might be down to four people. It's an offer that we only make once a year and we usually only make it to the last day of June. But we've had a couple of people reach out and say whether they can have that. So that's two particular, two particular options for you there right here, right now. 300 or $2,400. If you're interested in that, just go to b2b-.io. Let's blaze. H-T-T-P-S b2b-.io forward slash let's blaze. You'll land on an online form. That's right. Something that we built using B2B Dash. You'll be redirected to a cart page built in B2B, B2B Dash. You'll experience an onboarding experience for that amount there. And you have two options right here, right now. Now, of course, you do have a third option. The third option is that you do nothing. And uh, sure, that is indeed an option. But let's come back to that. All right, because I have some rewards for the proactive. So this is a 60-minute option only, rewards for the proactive. Number one, I said that I want to hook you up with an ecosystem mapping call. I want to hook you up with my, uh, my bestie, John Inglesos. Uh, and that way he can have a conversation with you and he'll say, based on your situation and circumstances, from what I've heard, here's a quick win. If we could set you up to book 16 meetings with very interested prospects in the next six weeks, would that be good for you? So for example, he might, he might look at where you're at and say, that's what you need. Incidentally, if you booked 16 meetings with very interested prospects in the next six weeks and closed, I don't know, say one in four, four new clients, how much would four new clients be worth to you? Have a think about that. So that's one thing. I want to hook you up with that particular call with John. And John is also going to hook you up with something called our 24 hour, a no matter what bonus, a no matter what bonus. And what's that? We're also going to give you immediate access to five different funnel fillers, LinkedIn for lead generation, strategic alliances and partnerships, network reactivation for the quick close, closed loop advertising strategies, website lead generation boosters. Each of these we sell for $497. We'll give you that whole stack there that whole set with $2,485 as something that we call our forever bonus set. What's our forever bonus set? What I want to do is I want to totally de-risk this for you. And that is because there's a bunch of people on this call right now that didn't know me or my crew or B2B Dash or the B2B school or what a B2B blazer was before today. So for you, I want to totally de-risk it. First, I'm going to give you a 30-day Let's Stay Friends money back guarantee. There's only one condition for the 30-day Let's Stay Friends money back guarantee, and that is that you sit down and you have that conversation with John, and you will thank us for it. Because at the end of that conversation with John, you are going to decide that this is not right for you, or John is going to decide that this is not right for you, and we will refund your money in full. If you've got a business partner or a spouse, take advantage of our, of our offer today. Sign up for the monthly 300. Have your call with John. If it's not right for you, we will refund your money 
Plus, we will honor our no matter what forever bonus. Yes, we'll still give you the five funnel fillers for free, no matter what to keep forever. So what I've done there is I've totally de-risked it for you. The worst case scenario is you uh, invest $300, you get a strategy call, which Paula described as worth more than a $10,000 mastermind. If it's not right for you, we give you your money back and you still get to keep your $2,500 worth of training. Sound like a good deal? I should, I should hope so. So once again, that there is the link to go to b2b-.io forward slash let's blaze. Now, I have a couple of different questions that people ask me at this particular point. And what I'm going to do, because I can see your questions coming in, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a pause on those questions, okay? Because what these questions are about is usually the art of objection handling, right? The questions that your customers and clients have, right? That there is objection handling. And objections usually come down to time, ability, and money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this particular slide in a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit of objection handling. I'm going to show you how to tackle the time question, the ability question, and the money question. Is that cool? So even when I'm introducing you to something that we can help you with, I'm also training you, okay? I'm training you at every single step of the way. Cool. So can anyone remember what the third little piece is, the game changer that I wanted to share with you? I'm just trying to find the slide here. Where's my game changer? Oh, where are you, slide? Here we go. Number three, self-closing offers. And let me remind you guys and girls, we do have a sticky bonus. Can you remember the sticky bonus? The sticky bonus is our Tofu Mofu Road, Roadmap. It breaks down the three stages of the funnel and includes a whole bunch of email templates and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. I'm going to blow my nose. I apologize. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. The sticky bonus you get for sticking around is our Tofu Bofu Roadmap, and you will get that if you stick around for the two-hour mark. <laughs> it's been awesome. All right, this is the, this is the bit. Self-closing offers. Get to the yes faster without compromising. On the screen right now, you can see something called our fuse method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down kind of fast. I'm going to break it down kind of fast, but however, a little bit earlier, I shared with you our worksheet and you can go back through the worksheet together. Or, are you ready? Or if you want, you can take the leap. You can jump into the B2B school, B2B Dash, become a B2B Blazer, have your strategy call with John, and you can work through this with John. So I've given you the worksheet. You can do it with me now or you can do it with John later. But this is something that we call our Fuse Method. It's our intelligent offers framework. This is also going to be the focus of our next boot camp, which our B2B Blazers get for free. And what we're going to do is we're going to help our crew assemble self-closing offers. I'm going to give you the blueprint right here, right now. Number one, if you want to sell something, it helps if you can offer a fist-pumping moment. Now, a lot of people, they say, what do you do? And you say what it is that you do. So what do you do, James? I'm a coach. I'm a consultant. I have a SaaS platform. What do you do? Right? That's what people say. Your customers and clients don't care what you do. They want, they want an outcome. So the simplest mechanism to do that is to answer this question. I thought I was in the business of whatever it is that you do. I thought I was in the business of coaching, consulting, technology, but all my customers and clients really want is fist pumping moment. So play along to the best of your abilities in the limited amount of time that we have together. All right. Philip has just said, really want that roadmap. And he's written it to hosts and panelists. Here is my promise to you, Philip, and everyone else is thinking the same. I will give you our fuse method as a separate resource that I've yet to pull together as a separate tool that you can use. I'll pull it together just for you if you participate as an unscheduled, unplanned participation bonus. What is the fist pumping moment in your world? Have you got one? Can you think of one? The best fist pumping moments can be measured. 
They are indeed quantifiable. Those are the best ones. So, for example, we have a training program that I mentioned before called 16 VIPs in six weeks. What do you get? Well, the goal of that particular program is to help you book meetings with 16 very interested prospects in six weeks. Because our people to sign clients need meetings. 16 meetings with very interested prospects. That there is a fist pumping moment, particularly if you struggle to get those meetings. Then if you can make it quantifiable, you are at the, you are at the precipice of creating a self-closing offer. But I meet people, what do you do? I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a strategist or whatever it is. That, is it, so is that what you do? Yeah, fine. All right, great. What do you do? Well, that particular product, we help solo and micro B2B business owners book 16 meetings with very interested prospects in the next six weeks. Of course, the brain then goes, well, if I only close one in four and every client is worth three grand, that is worth $12,000. What a bargain. So the first thing is understanding the headaches that they have before they know they need you, which is why we began with our monetization mantra. One person, one problem, one product. It doesn't have to be about everything that you do. It's one little piece of the puzzle. Someone might, might want to write this down in the chat. Smaller promises get bigger conversions. Smaller promises get bigger conversions. Quantifiable. Fist pumping moment quantifiable. That's the F. And it's interesting, you know, uh, for example, Dolph said, I can lift their production by 15%. Uh, and thank you for writing that, the couple of people who wrote that. It's worthwhile taking a step back, having a think about it, having a conversation with your customers and clients. What do you really want from me? I speak to people, what do you do? I'm a web developer. Great. But what do your clients really want? One person, one problem, one product. Well, if someone says, my clients are all authors, the problem is, is that they're, uh, they're beholden to Amazon. So let's get them more book sales through their website. Target audience. Uh, you're a web developer. Who are your clients? They're all Shopify store owners. All right. Okay. Well, then the problem is there's not enough traffic. Let's create a, a product to help them uh, get more traffic or, or convert more visitors on the page to leads and sales. Quantifiable fist pumping moment. Bam. If you want, here's a visual, a visual metaphor for you, a visual analogy. Remember the last scene of The Breakfast Club? <laughs> I've had my Seinfeld reference. Now I'm going to have my Breakfast Club reference. I had my Marky Mark reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Imagine the last scene, Judd Nelson walks across the football field. Don't you forget about me. When do your customers and clients talk about you? I'm so grateful that you came into my world, Mark, because you gave me that outcome. All right, number one, fist bumping moment. That is the answering the question, what do I get? What do I get? You get this quantifiable fist pumping moment. Next question that I ask, but is this right for me? Is this right for me? Now, use case certainty is what, there is, is what we want to provide. So one thing that we can do is if we can name the audience. So even our meetings are called B2B funnel mapping strategy calls, our AWP. It's a business-to-business -business funnel mapping strategy call. We name the audience. That's a great thing to do, to be able to name the audience in the name of your product or the name of the service. It's a... Uh, Lifetime value boosting audit for physios. We've said what it was it it what it is. That's the audience. Number one. Number two, social proof. Uh, if you've got uh, testimonials of that particular audience, that's great. If you don't, it doesn't matter because do you know what beats social proof? A methodology or a process. Now, what I did today is I actually ran through a methodology. It was the top pieces of the puzzle of a methodology. I talked about proposals, I talked about pricing, and then I talked about, uh, and I talked about the offer. Uh, that there would be the three parts to a, a product. You can see how I pulled it together, specifically for the target audience. And that's something that we also have training around as well, how to transform what you do into a product or a service into a methodology. I mean, uh, Naomi went so far down that particular path that not only was she able to go from selling $500 products to $9,600 products, she ended up productizing just about all of her information. It was extremely inspiring, uh, ex extremely inspiring to watch. 
And that comes from having a methodology and breaking down what you do and putting it in a bottle. Use case certainty, name your audience, deliver social proof, have some sort of methodology. Because they're all asking, will this work for me? Will this work for me? Well, it certainly does work for you because you're this particular target audience and here's the methodology. They see it, they go, I totally get it. And indeed on that AWP, that's when you reveal your methodology. All right, this is stuff at the top. We want more fist pumping moments. That's what we want. We want more of that. That's what they want. I want to know that I'm going to get amazing outcomes and I want to know that this is right for me. What do they want less of? These are the things that we need to minimize for them. Speed to outcome. Now, at the very beginning, someone said, my particular, my particular product takes six months or a year. People hear that and they go, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in six days. Six months, that's a really big commitment. Now, if we've got a quantifiable outcome and we can transfer that into a high no-brainer, by default, we're going to be able to deliver a shorter outcome, a bigger, a smaller outcome faster, which is a great way to do things. They come into your world and you say, hey, let's do an audit. Let's do an analysis. Let's do a mini strategy. Let's focus on this particular quantifiable outcome following our methodology because this is spe specifically for you. And we're going to do it in three days, two weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it's going to be. So, for example, if you were to join, become a, a new B2B Blazer, there are a couple of things that we would do for you very, very quickly. One, we would set you up with a call for John so we could focus on the part of the strategy that you need to fix. And also, we'd set you up with a guy called Paul uh, who works for us, uh, Paul Malari. And Paul Malari is going to take you through our fast starter implementation program. This is something only for the people on the call right now. And that there is three strategy calls with Paul as he helps you set up your entire funnel, hopefully in under 30 days. Imagine having a funnel and, and decision clarity, bringing in leads, booking meetings, doing all that stuff in under 30 days. That's speed, speed to outcome. Can you do it? The last piece is effort for outcome. People want, people want outcomes faster and they don't appreciate that it takes time to get an outcome. Uh, effort for outcome. All right, so <laughs> effort for outcome, and you know this and I know this, is there are a whole bunch of people on the call and they're listening to me break this down and they're going, wow, that's really great. That all makes sense to me. That sounds like hard work. <laughs> that sounds like hard work. And yeah, it does require a little bit of work, but it's focused work. But however, you know as well as I do, if I could give you a magic pill right here, right now, I wonder if I can draw a pill. If I give you a magic pill right here, right now, and say, take that pill, and you would get your heart's desires, you will take that pill. It's the same way why there are a million uh, meditation coaches all earning very little, uh, teaching people the best way to chill, which is meditation. And yet you also at the same time have um, billion dollar pharmaceutical companies that are selling a pill because most people would prefer to pop a Xanax than put the work in. So how could you do, this is a tough one, how could you do what you do faster or better or indeed break the rules. Break the rules. That's not something we can talk about or focus on today. But however, if you can break the rules and take a step back and say, I'm not going to just do everything the same way that everyone else is doing it. I'm going to deliver my product or service in a slightly different way by only fo focusing on, I don't know, the 20% that they actually give a shit about so that I can do it a lot faster where they follow my methodology, that is when you put yourself in your own market of one. And here's my little accelerator for that. One, jump into our Blazer program. Sign up, drop some bucks, invest in yourself, invest in your future. And I quite deliberately use the word investment because what we do is designed to make you money and or save you money, preferably both. That's one accelerator. Here's another accelerator. I said I got three accelerators, one for each of the strategies. Remember, our first accelerator was to have a gift. Our second accelerator was to have a cart. What's our third accelerator? Yes, this is an extension of the systems. And this is where I'm going to be bringing things home. If you do not have the systems to manage and automate your buildup and follow-up, 
you will always remain stuck relying on brain power alone. If you ever plan to get out of the hamster wheel and scale, you need to embrace tools and processes to get this stuff out of your busy brain. Now, I just ran through the fuse method and I talked about how it's great to have a quantifiable fist pumping moment. It's great to have target audience clarity, testimonials, be able to talk about, to be able to talk about your methodology, be able to demonstrate that you'll be able to deliver outcomes quickly relative to everybody else, and it won't be so hard. Do you know the best time to communicate all that stuff is? Up front, early on, like Rob here. I'm loving it when a prospect has gone through my funnel before they're pre-sold, before I even talk. Yes, the third accelerator I mentioned to, to you before is indeed email. Trigger sequences. People think that email marketing is all about sending email newsletters. No! Effective email marketing is about sending emails that are triggered by events. Somebody opts into your world, trigger a bunch of emails that demonstrate that you're reliable, memorable, commercial. Someone, I don't know, books a meeting. Elevate anticipation before the meeting. Boost the shot rate. Someone comes into your world, deliver an onboarding experience, a retention sequence. And once again, we have a bunch of different examples of that and a bunch of different templates in our Tofu Mofu Bofu Roadmap. And you guys and gals have indeed hit the two-hour mark, which means indeed you have, <laughs> you've unlocked the sticky bonus. Woo! Yeah. Well done. Yee-hee. You've unlocked the sticky bonus. If you've participated, you've uh, unlocked the participation bonuses. Of course, at the two-hour mark, I open myself up to questions. We've got question times. As I promised a little bit earlier, I'm happy to answer some of your questions about the Blazer program. I'm also happy to deliver a lesson on handling objections. And if we go in any other directions, we can do that too. <laughs> love it. Woohoo. Hooray. Rock and roll. And uh, yeah, you'll love it. I mean, like it's... Uh, it's a great document that we often uh, sell and you're gonna and you're gonna get it for free. So firstly, I want to thank all our existing blazers. You know who you are. I saw Neil there before, uh, a couple other familiar names. Um, because as I said, uh, every uh, once a month we have an open day, and today is an open day. So our B2B blazers are taking part in this. Some of them have done some of tra some training like this before. It's a bit of a refresher, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper over over coming weeks if you're an existing blazer and then we're going to do our boot camp together. So woohoo, thank you for being part of our world. And I hope you enjoyed the pitch too and I hope you learned something by watching me introduce new people to our blazer program because there's a time where you see it for the first time and you're interested in the pitch, you watch it a little bit later and you're interested in the process. That's the way it works. So the common questions are, oh man, wow, you know, you mentioned about a bunch of different stuff there, James. I don't have the time. How much time will it take? How much time will it take to become a blazer? Well, when I hear people say, I don't have the time, I immediately think you are like a hamster caught in a wheel. Running, 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 spinning, spinning, spinning. Let's just think about the automation piece for a second. If you could spend two to four hours setting up some automation stuff, and that two to four hours is going to save you two to four hours every week for the rest of the year, would that be worth something to you? I mean, like, think about it this way. If you were charging $75 an hour, which I believe is at the low end, and you were able to save four hours a week, that there works out to be $300 a week, $1,200 a month, $14,000 a year. I don't have the time. Time is like money, guys and gals. Use it well, and it will compound. So how much time will it take? If you can invest two hours initially, maybe two to four hours a week, two hours on the call to avoid making mistakes, maybe an hour and a half, two hours for execution in any given week, you'll begin to outperform everyone else in your space very quickly because you'll be doing things in more time intelligent ways. Number two, fear, ability. I don't have the tech skills, James. I don't have the sales skills. I know I just put on a massive song and a dance when it came to the sales thing. I just followed a checklist. That's what I did, a checklist. That's what we do. Technology, technology just keeps getting easier and better to use. I mean, I said it before, I started a print magazine. I was dragged into this digital age kicking and screaming. If I can figure out how to use the technology, you can too. All right, I'm not sure it's the right investment for me right now. This is not really a question about timing though, is it? It's really a question about the investment. Now, if it is the timing thing, I'll put it to you guys and gals, when is the best time to plant an apple tree if you want a nice, cool, 
glass of apple juice? The answer is 20 years ago or today. The best time is always now. If you've been putting this stuff off for a long time, now is the best time. And once again, I totally de-risked it for you because you can cancel any time. Indeed, if you cancel in the next 30 days, you get your, you get your first, you get your $300 back. How crazy is that? But this last question about, I'm not sure it's the right investment for me right now, is actually a question about, um, about uh, money, isn't it? It's really about money. So ask yourself, how much is one client worth to you? I'd like to know. Tell me. Use the chat tool. How much is one client worth to you in your world? Is, it, is a client worth, I don't know, is it worth $1,600? Is your client worth $16,000? Is it someone somewhere in the middle? Let's say $2,400. $2,400. Is a client worth more or less than $2,400? Well, I've given you an opportunity to sign up for an annual investment of $2,400, which once again, you can cancel in the first 30 days if it's not right for you. And do you think that if you were just a little bit smarter with your strategies, if you do think a little bit smarter with your automation, if you think you're just a little bit smarter because you actually sought advice from other people in your community that may be a couple steps ahead of you, do you think you could sign just one extra client in the next 12 months, in the next year, maybe two, maybe an additional project? This is the ROI case. The ROI case, return investment case, is very clear. Even if I apply that to money, uh, time, I did that a moment ago. What if you're charging $75 an hour? $75 an hour times four equals $300 a week, which is $1,200 a month. If you value your time, why aren't you investing in automation? How do you expect others to value your time if you don't value your time? So I've got two different scenarios for you that each present an ROI case. But you know what? ROI, return on investment, is rarely the most persuasive. Do you know what's more persuasive? COI. COI stands for cost of inaction. This is Marcus. We met him a little bit earlier. I didn't read the full testimonial from Marcus. He says, it was three years ago that I set myself the goal to do one of your programs. I even wrote it on my wall calendar. That year passed and I didn't follow through. The next year passed. And I put it off again. This year, I finally bit the bullet. It's now been just six weeks since I started your training and two amazing things have happened. I talked about this earlier. He's now working with clients who pay him a lot more, seven times what he was charging. And he also scored double, and he's also scored double his usual projects. I'm kicking myself that I didn't take action and just make it happen all those years ago. That is the piece that I want to highlight. Every day I come across people who are self-sabotaging. They're denying themselves the progress and success that they went into business to get that I believe that they thoroughly deserve. And they do that because they're unwilling to take action. They're unwilling to work on themselves, work in the business, uh, work on the business, work on themselves and invest in themselves. I see it play out again and again and again. Because this is my final little self-evaluation exercise. This is our focus progress matrix. This is focus and this is progress. And this shouldn't surprise you, but when we are focused, we make progress, yes? When we are not focused, we don't make progress. And now I'm about to map out the next 12 months of your life. Are you ready? You attend a webinar like this and you're excited. You get focused, you make progress. You get distracted, something gets in your way. You see the next shiny thing or the next greatest hack. You lose focus, you lose progress. It happens again, happens again, it happens again, and it happens throughout the entire year. And what happens is that there are some wonderful times throughout the year where you have lots of focus and lots of progress and it feels really exciting and it feels really good and you all know that feeling. Someone says, how's business? Oh, great. Yeah, I really feel like I'm on the right path. Everything's working out really, really well. And then there's those times where you are lost. You are lost and you are lonely and you are sad. And that's the way that it plays out. Wouldn't it be a lot nicer if your journey looked a little bit something like that? We're sure in the beginning, 
You might feel a little bit confused and a little bit lost. We talked about a lot today, didn't we? I've probably opened up a couple cans of worms and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and maybe a little bit dismayed, which is why I want you to have that call with John. And then you slide into it. You slide into it. And you can focus on making progress. That's what I want for you. So right now is your last chance to ask any questions. If you've got any questions, ask them now. Otherwise, I'm going to present this offer to you one last time and then we're going to wind up for the day or evening if you're in North America or Canada or some other part of the world where you're in a different time zone to me. So if you're thinking, yes, I do need to pull my finger out and structure my offer intelligently. Because every time that you present your dumb, confusing, friction-causing offer that sounds like everybody else to a potential customer or client, you're missing out on an opportunity. And that starts today. That's the cost of inaction. Mark is struggling to win a client, going to a point where he was closing twice as many and charging seven times more. I need to pull my finger out. Number two, yes, do you agree that success in sales and marketing largely comes down to processes and systems. Decision clarity is something that I love to give people. Systems equal sanity. Follow the process, follow the systems. Don't think too much and you'll be richly rewarded. Yes, there are layers and depth to this stuff and it will only happen if I set aside the time. Attending this webinar today was a really smart thing to do. I hope that I've opened your eyes to a bunch of different ideas and possibilities but I also know that it's going to amount to diddly squat for most people on this call. That sounds terrible. It's horrifying. I might help you avoid a mistake or two, but most people will just go back to whatever they were doing before, which has kept them at the level that they were before. What is it Einstein said? Keep doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different outcome is the definition of insanity. Yes, James and the B2B crew are extremely generous with their knowledge. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you for thinking that. I put that on the slide. But uh, it's true. I mean, like we have a support desk, right? But it's not a classic support desk, right? It's run by a guy called Paul, I mentioned before, Paul Malari. And Paul's job is not to provide support. Are you ready? Paul's job is to leave people feeling supported. Subtle little, a subtle little distinction there, all right? People have support desks. Imagine working with a bunch of people that get you and imagine using a technology tool not run by some faceless tech behemoth that does not want to hear from you, right, that resent your support tickets. We want to support you. Yes, I can really benefit from some ongoing support and group mentoring. As I said before, business can be a lonely journey, and for most people it is. We did a lot of fun stuff today. We played a lot of fun games. I got you to do a bunch of different exercises, and I helped you to the best of my ability in the limited limited amount of time that we have together, right? But however, it's when you embed yourself in an environment that you get the value of the ongoing support and the group mentoring. Yes, I fully understand that I need to invest in technology and invest in automation. It's a funny thing. A lot of people are still resisting it. But you know what? If you're not investing in technology, if you're not investing in automation, the reality is is that everybody else is quietly just moving ahead. You might feel like you're making progress, but you're falling behind. You're sitting in that, I don't know, you're standing at 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 the beginning of those train tracks, you see this big distance in front of you and you got to start walking, you got to start plotting and everybody else is moving so much faster. I heard a funny little analogy in the last 24 hours and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to end on that. I'm going to end on that. Um, and I, I, I mean, like I only heard this in the last 24 hours and I haven't done my research and I, and I may get it slightly messed up, but I heard that someone did a study to work out how efficient uh, different animals are when it comes to speed, uh, speed over distance, I think it was, something like that. So it was the efficiency of movement, and they wanted to measure and test all the different animals when it came to the speed and efficiency of movement. So what they did is they uh, analyzed, say, a chimpanzee in comparison to an orangutan, in comparison to a gorilla, in comparison to a human, 
in comparison to a zebra. What animal do you think was the most efficient when it came to speed? When it came to generating speed and going uh, over distance, what, do you th- what animal do you think was the most efficient? Uh, uh, give me an answer. Can you think of an, an animal? Like immediately when I heard that, I'm like thinking, is it a horse? They're really fast. Uh, I'm thinking, is it a, someone else thought about the obvious one? Is it the cheetah? Is it the cheetah? <laughs> it's a fun little way to end today. A zebra? The answer was it was a condor. So it was a condor. They're very efficient. They're very efficient animals. They go fast. They go over long distances at speed, right? So, you know, humans uh, were probably not even in the top 100. I don't know. Maybe they were 83. I don't know. But when it came to the efficiency of movement, when it came to speed and distance, and I'm sure I'm getting that slightly wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. The condor reigns supreme. However, at the conclusion of that test, someone thought, you know what? What if we introduced a human on a bike? What if we just did that? We introduced a human on a bike and we used all the same metrics that we were using to measure all the different animals. And all we did is we did as we put a human on a bike and the human on a bike totally blitzed it, totally blitzed the, the, the condor and all the other animals, which means that it shouldn't come as any surprise that I'm sitting here in Melbourne, Australia, and you're in all parts of the world and we're all learning from each other because humans are able to use what we've got up here to do things in more efficient ways and get to outcomes faster. That is what I'm talking about when I talk about the tech and automation piece. We can plot along doing the ways that we used to do things 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 100 years ago, or we could be part of that little group of people that is blitzing ahead of absolutely everybody else. Well, that was a fun little analogy to to end on. (laughs) So I want to thank you once again. I want to thank our regular Blazers. You know who you are. Love you guys and gals. Um, And uh, I want to thank the people that have already jumped in, that have gone to b2b-.io forward slash let's blaze. And you guys and gals that have done that are going to unlock our 60-minute bonus because I do not know of any other place in the world on the planet where you can get the systems, the community, and the technology specifically for someone just like you. And you can invest in any one of those three things and end up paying a whole lot more. Bill says, thanks team. You have given me the ability to review what we have and what we are lacking. I'm new to to a business and reviewing their systems. Cheers. Thanks, Bill because systems equal sanity. Incidentally, I want to thank you for the thank yous, but if you are like Bill and you want to share a little epiphany or a little breakthrough, now is your moment, now is your time, particularly if you have not locked any of the participation bonuses. And there's a really valuable reason for doing this. Sharing something that you've learned today will reinforce the message in your head. That means that you're also more likely to execute on that thing in the next 12, 24, 48 hours, next week, whatever, okay? Also, here's the beauty of that. The other people that are the stayers that are still on the call right now, they're looking at what you say and they go, oh, yeah, that was a good point. So what is one thing that I said today that stood out for you? Maybe it's one thing that you're going to teach to somebody else in your team, in your crew. Maybe it's it's a supplier that you have. Maybe there's one thing that you can execute in the next 12 to 24, 48, 72 hours. What is one thing that I stood out, said that stood out? Maybe it's one thing that you could teach or maybe it's one thing that you could execute on. I want you to leave those messages for me right here, right now, because everyone else is going to be able to see them. Uh, um, Janine, will we have access on this since we are on the momentum plan already? Janine, if you're on the momentum plan, you have access to this. Yay. You, you've all got it. You got all the good stuff. That's all right. Um, Linda says, thank you for the info, the reminders and the powerful info. You're welcome, Linda. That's really, really terrific. Thank you for saying that. Um, (laughs) Let's have a look at that. Someone's drawn, someone's dropped me an an emoji and I can't figure out what it is. Uh, Faith says, love your energy. Oh, uh, uh, Aaliyah's done an emoji of a zebra. Where'd you get that? 
<laughs> was it a bike with wings? <laughs> all right, Neil says, join, guys. You won't regret it. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Uh, all right, so what are some of the things that stood out? Linda said productize. That is a great and powerful lesson. Thank you so much, Linda, for bringing that up. What you'll notice is at the top of the funnel, we took your wisdom and we transformed it into a thing, an item of high perceived value to your people. I gave you the example of, um, who was it? It was John Weichardt. Identified who his target audience was, startups, and then he created a guide on how to stop sabotaging your, uh, your product. Something of high perceived value. From his head, turned it into a lead magnet for the top of the funnel. Then as we moved down, you saw an example like Troy. Troy took a meeting and productized it. He's getting paid to pitch, right? Something that most people just struggle with. You know, everyone's out there at the begging and the pleading stage. Some people transform it into something of high perceived value. Other people transform it into something that's of such high perceived value, people want to buy it. Productized a meeting. Who'd have thunk it? At the beginning, I said that there would be ideas that I would bring up and you'd go, oh, no one would ever do that. Have a think about how some of these things might translate to you in your world. For example, Mary did say appointments with purpose. As I said, most people struggle to get that meeting. They're over a discovery call. And you know what? I don't want to jump on a call with you so that you can mine me for information so you can sell at me harder. That's what I hear when I someone says discovery call to me. Well, they say a breakthrough call. I don't want to, I don't want to get on a call and have someone make me cry, <laughs> break me down. <laughs> you, can, you can shout out to a crowd of people. You say, who wants change? They go, yeah. Who wants to change? Oh, no. Now, you guys and gals, I hope you want both. I hope you want change, and I hope that you also want to change. And the fastest way that I can help you change is by jumping into b2b-.io forward slash let's blaze. I said this to a mate of mine the other day, a, a friend of mine that became one of our clients. I said, I will always help you, mate. I will always help you. But I can help you better when you become a client. And I can do that with extreme certainty because I know that he is going to get results that are at a multiple of the investment that he put in. Evan said, I need to way narrow down my offer. Love the three Ps. Evan, I would love you to take the next step. I would love you to dive in if you haven't done so already. I'd love you to book that call with John and you can sit down and you can talk about target audiences. We have metrics for this. Systems equal sanity. We have a process, right? There's different audiences that are not so good. There are other audiences that are great. There are tests that we run, like the doctor on the plane test to know that you're on the right path, on the right page. If you jump on a plane and say, is there a doctor on the plane? The doctors stand up. If you say, is there, who's excited about health and wellness? Everyone just looks at each other funny. You know, a powerful target audience. You can name them, you can find them, you can identify their headaches. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Three POs. There we go. That's another great one. Three POs, three part offers. Did you like my wine analogy? We've all been there. We've all seen it. Everyone goes out there. Here's the option. They go, I don't want it. Oh, well, what if I give you this other option? Well, your credibility is lost. You've got two options. All right. Well, I'm, I'm interested in this one or that one. What about that? Three options. All right. This is a great thing about those three options. I didn't talk about this earlier. This happens at least once a month in our world, maybe seven, several times a month. Someone pulls together the three options, right? Remember what they were, premium, Patsy, preferred? And they throw down those three options. And let's say one is $10,000, one down is $2,400, the one in the middle is $2,800. Let's say it's that, right? And they go in there expecting people to sign the $2,800. The first meeting, someone buys the, the, the preferred. Second meeting, someone buys the preferred. Third meeting, someone is the wrong fit. It's never going to work out anyway. Fourth meeting, someone buys the premium. And then suddenly everything that they've been thinking before about the cap or the limit or the ceiling on how much they charge us gets bumped up. And we've seen that story play out again and again and again. Uh, let's have a look. Phillips is one person, one problem, one product. I'm glad it stood out. It's the monetization bit. It's going to affect absolutely everything that you do. Aaliyah said, include qualifying questions before someone opts in. We gamified it, remember? Simple two-field name, email to gamify, increase engagement. It's so counterintuitive. Uh, but however, it works. Here's Louise. Louise says, last week, I got five new leads from people who opted into my lead magnet using my Dashlander. 
Now, if this was her homepage to get those five leads, she probably would have needed to get 250 people to the page. That's so hard. But with a lander that's converting at, say, 20%, she only needs five. So to get her five leads, she needed to get 25 people to the page. Too easy. Too easy, right? And they opted into her lead magnet. I knew that I didn't need to do a thing uh, because my email sequence is automated in Dash. I also know that from those stats, she got the five new leads and two of them booked a meeting. Five leads, two booked a meeting. She didn't need to do a thing because all the email and follow-up was automated in Dash. Rock and roll. Wow, your feedback is coming in thick and fast. This is so good. Uh, if you've got to get on with the rest of your day, obviously, please do get on with the rest of your day. I think it's time for me to move on as well too. Um, and yeah, I'm just having a look at some of your questions and your observations. If you've got any final questions, now is the time to ask. Otherwise, it's time for me to go. Last chance, b2b-.io forward slash Let's Blaze. This is like an auction <laughs> to get in there. Do it now. If you're already a B2B Blazer and you want to jump on the annual plan, jump on the annual plan. You know the value that you're already getting. If you're wanting to commit for a little bit longer, it's a great plan for you. If you're um, if you're on a Blazer and you just sign and you just uh, paid your, you know, $300 installment like last week or the week before installment, whatever whatever it's called, monthly investment. Um, we can debit that from the 2,400. Suddenly it's like 2,100. That's cool. Or we can extend the days out as well too. Or we can make a trigger at the next, uh, when the next number comes around. It's really up to you. Uh, a very attractive option there. A hell of a deal. And if you are on the fence, go to b2b-.io forward slash Let's Blaze. You'll find a little bit of a form there. You can take the first step and at least we will then know that you were interested. But otherwise, I want to thank our Blazers once again. I want to thank my crew and my team once again. Uh, I want to thank all you guys and gals that decided today to work on your business rather than in your business. And let me assure you, when we meet once a week, we do not spend two and a half hours together. And we also have uh, opportunities to pull people into the hot seat where we work with individuals and we strategize and brainstorm with them together. It's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful thing to watch. It's a really cool thing to be a part of because in my position, I get to watch 30 to 50 campaigns launch in any given month. I get to see what's working. I get to see what's not working. I get to advise people in, in, in unusual ways that I never expected just based on having been part of this world. And I also, this is the, the most beautiful piece of all, I also get to watch our people support our other people. And if you're a blazer, you know what I'm talking about. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing to watch. All right. Have a great day. Have a great night. It's bye from me. It's bye from my team. Thank you for the thank yous. It is indeed bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.